And so there are a lot of different factors that have to be looked into um, before any of this stuff occurs large scale. Okay, yeah, good. Um, Kick right yeah. the gear again at point two. Thanks. Yeah, so yes, but very limited down. and more work needs to be done to kind of understand its impact. Right. off this cliff and I can just kind of ladder along and go up. We'll see. If, uh, if you find that it's too dark, you can adjust the ISO up or down, depending on how it looks. Yeah, we've got a, a lot of Coral diversity here, kind of expected for these depths, but Aridogorgia, a couple of plexorid species, um, Paracalyptrophora, for another primnoid, uh, Parentopathies. Um, some of these have been collected already in this area by previous expeditions, so we're on the lookout for things that really haven't on, uh, been well documented in these waters. Two three zero, or things that are unusual. Two three zero. So yeah. that's what I'm trying to so discern when I'm looking at wall. things too. Zoom in on the unusual. Bridge, no? Yeah. Keeping you busy tonight, Sam. <laughs> yeah, and Keep the bridge busy. navigators are going to get a workout today. <laughs> and it's just getting started. Could you change bearing to 230, please? 230. Thanks. Uh. Not a not a ton of. Um, I mean, this might be an area for loose rocks. If uh, uh, looks like there's some yeah, rocky rubble. Yeah, looks like there's some float piles. Yeah. You think any of them might be uh, candidates that would be safe enough to uh, yeah. deploy the armor for? One way to find out. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're stepping the ship a little closer to. Herc yeah. there, stepping out mm -hmm. just a little closer to Herc, so it's a good time to play around. Well, there you go, viewers. Stay tuned for the geology fans. Do we we might here? be uh, uh, nothing over here, yeah. identifying a rock sample to collect. So I set that thing right where this is set when I'm over there. Or you can put it on the bench. Or whatever. This is pretty big stuff, but just, just up this uh, little channel, there might be some. I'll, I'll deal with that. Here, here a minute. In theory, I should just have to... Uh, I can't ready. say the crust is, like, tremendous here. It doesn't look that dark compared, but, you know, it might be something. Yeah. Dan, let me know when you want to stop. Let's Could be it. some of the sediment cover, yeah. too. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah, cool. what she got you just never know until you bring yep, it up, huh? Moving. That's, that's uh, correct. 30, 30 <laughs> meters left. Let's stop her up there now. Yeah. yeah. Had a couple of surprises so far. Yep. Hold position. There's a question coming in that yeah. intersects geology and biology. Well, and get it out with like or you want me to currents and oceanography. Um, between geology and currents, which I'll, of the two has a larger it. impact on the density of life that you see at a given area down here? Or you could, when you turn it on, you should bring it out right into the minute view, to the camera view. If you want, I can do this for you. I think we might need to come back Ready? to that question until after we uh, finish this sampling here, just so we can focus on that. All right. So stay tuned. Yeah. Yep. All you gotta do is pick up the arm and unfreeze it. Pick some victim that's deep once here. Yeah. So um, can make a. Can
communal decision here, but I was thinking these up here probably are a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, right here. Yeah. Little, little ones. What do you think about those? Okay. I think they could yeah. work. As good as any. Yeah, I as guess. good as any in this okay. area. Yep. Um, Sounds good. Just gonna tilt down a little here to see, make sure I'm not. Uh, or what do you think about that one? Parking are six better, or worse. Are you sending it? Down, or are we doing it's definitely phone? bigger. Also, the yeah. more material you have, yeah, kind of, you know. What I do think you think about that one? Is that a a no go? I don't know. Um, you can try on the fly there. Let me uh, see if it's loose and let me kick it sideways a little so you have some room. It's a steep slope. Thanks. What is that little red guy crawling up there? On the oh rocks? yeah, that's a it's a fan favorite. Um, it's a crab. It's a type of crab called a hamalid crab the family Homolidae, uh, and uh, sorry, that's too far sideways. they are pretty charismatic in that they all have this kind of uh, camouflage they carry around with them. It's a type of association. Uh, some of them will, so they their uh, rearmost <laughs> legs are Steve, modified. Okay. recircle it? I lost eyes on it. Yes, yeah, Thanks. right here in front of you. Ah, perfect, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so um really homolid crab. So I'll get back to you about that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ah, the old pokey. Pokey first. Go? I think it's gonna go. Okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, you got it where you want it. Something on there. Yeah. How's that? Show off your yeah. Happy. Can you give it a little <laughs> ro rotisserie <laughs> action? <laughs> Victory rock. Oh, it's kind of. Okay, that's a first rotisserie kind of rock. <laughs> Should I bring it closer? Yeah, I can, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, put whoops. it back out in the light. There you go. Do you not have porch light? I can do porch light. Ooh, very nice. Oh, like a jewelry kiss. Give Tammy a Some crust on that, I think. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll go with that. Really weathered on the bottom, but I think the crust might be... Where are we putting a saving this grace? Well, what's Stop safest? It. What's safest for you? Uh, Starboard? Yeah, I mean, there's space oh, in both around. forward bio it's boxes, really and all of the starboard boxes are open as well. It's probably easier in this spot to stick it in the starboard box. All right, let's do it. Is that where we put rocks, anyways, isn't it? Yep. Okay, yep. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna hit the sample cell before you. Thank you. And what I do is I look at the, now I look at bubble, so you can see how you're coming around. Let's see, I need to do a camera thing here, give me a second. So the depth camera. is yeah. 1134. I'm going to... Uh, go uh, challenge in like A, B, C, or D. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Well, right on that crab tip. Oh. Nice. Okay, you can close it. Rebecca, what number was that? That is 30. Thank you. Maybe it wasn't the crab. Score, three yeah, points. It's the crab. Seven, three, eight. So yeah, the homolid crabs. Uh, yeah, so the the rearmost uh, appendages are modified, kind of uh, to pick up 
things. It could be, uh, in this case, an anemone uh, that they use Does for some kind of Freeze camouflage. Frozen? Frozen. Okay, don't turn off the blue button. I, I turned turn. off the craft bell. And so it picks up another creature and uses it like a like a bush? Pretty much like a... So like a decorator crab in the in the inner tidal zone. Yeah, you know, I, I always... So confused about like why about why you know the physical thing matters. So uh, there's been some speculation that maybe it's actually a chemical camouflage. So if you smell like something else, maybe they won't smell your crabby odor. Uh, <laughs> they just like to accessorize. <laughs> accessorize like no one's watching because no one is. Kind yeah. of oh. <laughs> well, it's dark down there. Yeah. Oh, but if you're going to look good, you might as well smell good, too, I guess. Or if you're going to smell good, you could better look good. I don't know. My favorite ones are often the ones that pick up whole sponges or the pick up branches of corals. And um, it gets really funny because sometimes they'll pick up a different okay, species of coral away. branch and then hop onto and live on another right. coral species. So it's not Crap, really clear what they're camouflaging so from if they have multiple different coral species <laughs> okay. in and around them. Yeah. Great collection. That was a appreciate you uh, putting us on the geology map here. <laughs> what was the name of that crab again? It's a homolid crab. I'm not able to spell that. H O M O L I D A E is the family. Uh, let's get the, let the sonar scan there one time. We'll see more as we get shallower. They they get pretty charismatic. We'll start picking up different types of corals or snip off bits of corals and then pick those up. Uh, oh, what's this? Any chance we can zoom on this thing? I if you have a sure. time. Yeah, well, we haven't started moving the ship. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead, Tammy. Looks like an old coral head. Maybe maybe even a shallow water coral falling down. Whatever it is, it looks quite old. There's some more also to the upper left. It's a cool shot in the DSC of it too. Yeah. Oh, I see you working it. <laughs> you got the still cam up there? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Oh. Can I actually attempt to frame up your Can you change part? the iris on the still cam for light? Uh, usually we just play with the ISO and that brings it down. You can also bring the shutter speed down to 1 over 80. You know what this tells me, Steve? Yeah. Uphill it could be some. Cool but that's a, that's always the most fun part about doing these dives is you start seeing fallen debris from species you haven't seen yet and you're in anticipation. Okay. Well, like what's going to Disney going to Disney World for the first 230? time. Two three zero. Um, um. I How think, close uh, do you want to get or go go south with Argus I southwest? I think that's what I was trying to work out. So. We want to go up the hill, right? Yeah. Uh, but our waypoint is... Waypoint is down at 135. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would try to uh, kind of cut, cut, waypoint. cut between the ridge crest and waypoint 2. So kind of go upslope, but also... Like this, Steve? Yeah, 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 yeah. Kind of following the contour we have been for a little while. Oh, you want to follow that same contour? No, no, no. Uh, so this way. Yeah, but a little bit up so. A little bit up so. Yeah. It's trying to stay on that steepest portion. The waypoints are approximate. Here? Yeah, that looks good. Right there. Okay, so that's... Eh, let's call it 160. How's that sound, Dan? Yeah, uh, try it. See what happens. Well, it doesn't get us much up. We want to go up a little bit. Uh, Steve called it, so I'm, I'm good with it. Let's see what yeah, happens. Yeah, 
Let's do that for a little bit. If it turns out it's just we're going along a wall without too much up, we'll uh, we'll change. Right. Pretty, pretty much nav. Pretty much every direction is up though. Yeah. Uh, five zero meters bearing one six zero. That'll take us closer. I think. The hard part here is so to that, keep Argus. that depth was uh, eleven so thirty four. Kind of about where you want to put Argus. Maybe go another hundred meters them. and see if yeah. we can pick up another so one. We, we're within that twenty meter thing. This seems like a pretty rich spot. Some of it's actually it looks pretty. But I can. Well encrusted still. I could cheat so I can like come down or left or right or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So are we going up along a wall or right now or just, so I, I can't tell. I'm having a hard time Me neither. figuring out the <laughs> orientation yeah. of what's happening here. So the, yep. the, pl the dive plan as, as written uh, goes up a canyon, but going up the middle of a canyon is not very interesting because a lot of things just collect in a canyon uh, and sometimes it's just sediment, you know, sand channels and sand chutes. So what we're going to do is kind of go up along just below the ridge uh, on one side of the canyon and ex inspect kind of the vertical and you know, faces like this of the canyon wall. Does that make any sense, front row? Okay. Yeah. So the canyon is to the east uh, of Waypoint 2 there. So I'm going to move uh, to the east a bit there. And, uh, I'll come down or up to try and maintain the uh, hardest to hurt distance off the wall there. Why don't you give us the best uh, imagery along the way? Roger. What are those contours on HIPAC right now? Uh, I think they're 50, but let me check. 25. Okay. Uh, the black are 25, white are 5 meters. Okay. And there are two hercs right now. The one with the um, crosses is the correct heading for Herc, but this with the red trail is actual Herc. <laughs> okay. That's a new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why we call them Navigessers. <laughs> I've learned a lot about making an educated guess. Na Did you say Navigess? Navigesser. Yes. <laughs> Can we zoom in on uh, this little Absolutely. outcrop here? I always thought that was Go rude. Ahead, Tammy. I always thought that was rude until I actually sat in the seat and was like, okay. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> it's a function. It's yeah. not a. It's not an insult. <laughs> it's an educated navigator. Yeah, that's a great tableau. <laughs> Interesting any, how they're all lined up. Any of the particular ones you want to no no I just I, oh, I, I like the the still cam shots we're getting right now of kind of the face and then the, the wall which drops off Me too. I'm gonna yeah, use this uh, closer with use this still cam for all it's worth before we lose it potentially next cruise we we'll still have it <laughs> <laughs> it is not employed currently in the in the next expedition maybe well, it'll be in the upper light bar, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Unless I get to take it apart and put a better camera in it. <laughs> now, this is great. Yeah. Some of these plexorids are... Compl so, like, this one up here next to the lasers, this one is a plexorid that's been completely denuded of polyps. It has a... The interesting thing about these plexorids, the yellow ones here, these are the same family that you find in shallow water, tropical reefs, um, you know, sea fans, gorgonians, um, and the skeletons are actually made out of combinations of protein and calcium carbonate. Uh, so they're a bit more flexible and often uh, kind of fibrous. Yeah. 
I can uh, look down a bit here or move this vehicle. Probably move the vehicle. We got Beautiful plenty of yeah. there. Looks good. Thanks for those shots. I think we've got a colony of maybe Norella there as well. Uh, down Another low type or of from Noid. You can tell where the good flows are because you'll often have several colonies on top of each other. Yeah. Very nice. Oh. Can, is it possible to speculate on the age of these mounds based on how much sediment is, pre is present? It's coming in from the website. And then secondary, are the rocks till in color? The color we see on the camera, is that the color they look like when we retrieve them on deck? Okay. Yeah, the color is pretty similar to what we see on the seafloor. Um, some of the sediment might wash off as we bring it into the lab and get them cleaned uh, for processing, so that they may appear a little bit darker. But for the most part, those stay the same color. Um, Kirk. We lost the pot. What's her, her bearing again? Some of the corals do change color, though. Um, One six zero. If they're exposed to warmer waters, they stress out and they start to die, and the necrotic tissue kind of turns dark uh, purple or blue. Uh, it doesn't maintain that nice yellow color, although that's what we strive to do. Steve, how are you feeling about this bearing? Uh, I think it's okay. Is it a is it a problem oh, from navigation? Good, good for me. Yeah, I like I like this. Uh, if, uh, if Argus can hold that one six zero heading for a while, I'll try and stay in the picture. Okay, I'll add another Give step. Break over there. <laughs> Bridge nav. Let's add it another five zero meters, please. Uh, five zero meters bearing one six zero. Yes. Can we take a look, actually, uh, before you go too far on this thing? Stick okay. under on the underhang there, overhang. Take just a. We don't need to linger. I just wanted to get a closer look. It was really small. Try and float up there. Float, hurt, float. I find that more sediment, the lower the ISO should be because it's really ref reflective of the light, I think. I can uh, blast the porch light for that shot if it's uh, too Do you dark still have the porch light on? No. Okay. No, that's, that's, I think the photos are okay, right? Yeah. Not too washed out. Yeah, I think darker is better, right? Cause yeah. Because always lighten it up. At least some shutter bug told me that. We've got a Chrysogorgia colony too in the background there. Yeah, okay, this one in the lower left looks like kind of the same species of Norella that we saw a little earlier. bit earlier. Uh, next to those yellow colonies. It's a little in the shadow, it's tough to see. Question coming in from the website about these corals. Um, can can they survive in shallower waters? Do we keep, keep when we sample them? Do we keep them alive, or do they need high pressure in order to survive? It's it's uh, it's more the temperature than the pressure. Uh, so a lot of the a lot of species uh, will often at least at these steps not have too much time adapting to surface pressures. Um, but as long as we can keep the water cold, that's the most important thing. Um, so right now the water temperature is uh, about 4.2 degrees C, so four point two C is about you know, 39, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's like a chilly winter day, uh, at least where I'm from. <laughs> sounds unbearably cold to me. <laughs> <laughs> Where I'm from. Might, might need a jacket, you know. <laughs> now, my curiosity is if we bring them up, could we potentially, you know, label them and get some expression 
figure out what genes are being turned on and off. Ah. Compare that to other species. Yep. And what uh, genes turn on and off. That'd be kind of a cool little investigation. That that has been done. Ooh. Uh, well, it's attempted to be done for certain species in certain places. Um, it's a really cool type of experiment when we can do that. I'm not gonna ladder a left. Can you bring uh, Marcus heading back to one? Oh, you're going off comes. I am. Uh, we'll, Let's we'll talk follow more, up this conversation. Because I'm like now yeah. my my brain's starting to think of these cool <laughs> sciencey questions and investigations. All right, I'm going off comms. Gonna have some dinner, uh, people, but uh, I'll be back shortly, and you'll get Kelly. What's the zero I? Thank you. It's a uh, ship's bearing. One six zero. But that was a question. We're all on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a question, but I'll answer anyway. <laughs> I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night. One, six, zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's really steep, Gabby, so you can we keep a closer, closer to 10 meter delta. Closer. 10 to 15. She's you wanted a 10 meter delta? 10 to 15, she's been trying to hold that. Roger. Delta Dan's back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we're on the wall, right? So. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah. Oh. An anemone, I think. Like living on the end yeah. of the black coral. Push yeah. a bit there, Tammy. And then some more of this coral Roger's debris, over there. which uh, is a good sign. Well, not maybe not for the coral, but. <laughs> So this is what I was saying before about these. Uh, this one is a black coral right here called Parantipathies. And then there's a closed uh, flytrap anemone called Vectinoscyphia. Oh, it's uh, that's kind of You've, oh, you take those photos. taken over Who's part Steve, of the colony. Steve's taken that's oh, okay. Doing those. I'm just, I just have it up there so I can frame up the shot for him. Gotcha. All right, great. Great shot of this one. It looks like it's digesting a meal, maybe. <laughs> so just about what most of us are going to be doing in a few minutes. <laughs> Hopefully more elegantly. But <laughs> you, don't, you don't curl up into a ball when you have a <laughs> big meal? Sometimes. I only want to go to sleep. <laughs> Depends on if there's ice cream or not. Oh. It's not Sunday. Not Sunday. <laughs> Two more days. Hi, Kelly. Hi. I don't think we've ever been on watch together. I know. You get 30 minutes until you have to leave and go get yeah. your dinner. <laughs> so far, I haven't noticed any uh, kind of zon zonation changes in a lot of the species we've been seeing here. So most of the corals we've been seeing, we've been seeing since uh, we got on bottom 1,400 meters. It's not too unusual. We've only moved 300 meters or so vertical. I think the next transition zone is about 1,000 meters. So we'll see if we start seeing new species around there. Um, but for the most part, corals and sponges, pretty similar. Mm. 1,000 meters is kind of the magic depth where you start seeing uh, a lot of um, potential deep water reef builders like Analepsemia or Madripoora form larger uh, structures on the rocks. So that's what I'm most interested in, trying to see if we see any of the evidence of those. Is this an Eritic Gorgia stock that has hydras on it now? Looks yeah, like it. a bit there if you it's, want a, to it's a borrowed home. Yep. Wow. All right. Hello, I'm out of here. I'll uh, go curl up and do a ball and digest my meal. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Roger, enjoy. <laughs> Hope you find a good black coral. Okay. Uh, <laughs> huh. Yeah, I had about 15 meters left on this step. Yeah, that's a good heading, so keep, keep talking. Adding about. another yeah. bridge now. Okay, I'm gonna come up. We a can add five zero there. meters, please. What's that? I'm gonna come up a little faster. Now. Roger. Unless we see something to see. Bearing one six zero, please. It's a pretty rad little tunicate thing. Yeah. You can come up to keep uh, perking the 
picture there. Oh, Bob's coping. Oh, look at his little face. Oh, we gotta go get a shot. <laughs> <laughs> it oh. might be a bat, batfish. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, we saw one of these on our watch. I think yeah, it's a batfish. Right. Should I see him? That's good there. Oh, he's so weird. Oh, I'll get him. Our, our batfish was a bit cuter. Wow. This one's not bad. <laughs> this guy's like very toothy. I like that. <laughs> I'll have to learn more about He has a lot fish. of attitude. Wow. The eyes are so bulgy. Is this in the anglerfish family? It is. I can yes. see a little lure down there. Oh, hello. Exactly. Hello. Oh, I love it. But it has an under chin lure? Is that what it looks like? Or am I just seeing it? Um, I think that's, that's what, what it, you're seeing, yeah. Yeah. How big can they get? Push this particular know. species? or? Yeah. I'm not sure. At least, at least 30 centimeters. <laughs> 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 it's pretty symmetrical. Okay, uh, one, uh, one push in a bit more and then we have to go. Are these teeth or are they oh my God. frilly sensors? It's a great question. Oh, that's quite a close up. This is so cool. Okay, time to go. Bye. Rocks, rocks approach Argus. <coughs> Kelly, that was like one of the major highlights of uh, our watch. <laughs> Yay, I'm Log so it. glad I'm here. <laughs> I did, I did. Okay. <laughs> you made it just in time. I'm sure Tizana is very bummed. <laughs> okay, we're just about level with waypoint two. Nice. And waypoint three is just a little more east, but we're good on this bearing for a bit more, should be. Roger. that ladder up for a bit there to get back in here. So near your camera. That one six zero heading. Okay, back up twenty meters away now. Let's come up a little faster if you want. Get me. Jordan, what fun thing are you playing with? The camera. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, the still cam? Yeah. What's that? Is that a... What is that? Look at that. Star? Ooh. Push it, push it yeah. Is it eating? It's good as it is. Maybe di about to digest. Is that Steve? <laughs> 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 Interesting star. Hello. Eight arms, it looks like. Yeah. Wow. That's what I'm seeing. I'm not familiar with this species. Me neither. Let's see if we can figure out who this is. How many arms do you think it has? If One, two, three, four, five, six. If you look at the 4K seven, camera up here, yeah. at the bottom right, you can kind of see the top down. Oh, yeah. Seven or eight seven arms. Seven or eight, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think at least, I think I'm seeing eight. Okay, time to go.
video is swapping out. Right there. Shrimp. Fish. <clears throat> Are rock pens on the list at all? Yes. Is that a rock pen? Top right? Mm -hmm. Maybe. There's a specific rock pen on the list. If we have enough time to go to Zoom. Top right. Sorry. Yeah, you know, circle it. I don't know what you. This one? Yes. Um, if that's a sample, we'll want to stop it up. You can zoom in a bit there, video. Science, let us know as soon as possible if you want to stop. Great. I don't think that's it. Yep. Uh, so. I think we're good. I think we're there. good. Thank you. Zoom back in just a bit, please. That's good. Um, are we going to change our bearing here soon? Yeah, we can. Um, the same yeah, we're actually, we could start crabbing over, let's say, oh, I don't want to cut over too fast, but I also don't want to lose our train here. Um, science, if we're going down to waypoint three, are you keen on staying right under the ridge or do you want to yeah. drop down a bit? Right, right. I'm looking at your screen. Yeah. Going like that looks perfect. And then we'll kind of move off to the east when we get around there. Okay. Uh, Dan, we can stay on 160 unless you're... Uh, yeah, right, right about there. That was good. Trying to plan ahead. Right there, Megan? Yeah, that looks good. Well, it's 155. We could, okay. We can make it. <laughs> no, no, no. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> 160 is fine. Great. Is that a Victor Gorgia? And another Slime Star. Oh, yeah. I see this. You want to see the Slime Star, do you? Yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> slime Star. Uh, video, you can push in a bit there. What's next to the Slime Star? Maybe a sponge? Mm -hmm. Who's that? Yeah. Maybe a little okay, bit. That might be an interesting one. On the screen. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Looks like it. Little shrimp. <laughs> shrimp for scale. Nice. Okay. Get on that. Up. Bridge nav. Five zero meters, bearing one six zero. These channels are interesting. Was that a Metallagorgia we just passed over? Maybe. Oh. Come up just a bit, Antonella. Is this one of those, um, the those the black corals we were seeing? The Pranapathies? Yeah, Pranapathies. Yeah. Just a bit there if you want video. Keep it on the screen. That's good, thanks. Yeah, we've seen a few of these. Loading up for a still if anyone's on the still camera. Right about now. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, I grabbed one of those. That's a great shot for the still. Okay, moving on. There you can zoom out a bit more. 
perfect. Thank you. Click an alert, maybe. Metallic or you? It's Christ Gorgia. Just off the screen on the right? Mm -hmm. or, yeah, I'm not sure. Can we get a zoom on these guys over here? Sure. Zoom in a bit there. And oh, nice. Aridogorgia. Perfect. Some plexorids. Plexorids, yeah. Some brittle stars, a shrimp. Am I looking at the right one? I lost the plot there. Um, yeah, that's nice to look at. We could also look a little bit to the left, just just off the screen. These yellow ones. Nice. Um, oh, and another, that looks like a little one of those black corals that we just saw. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that's look at that brittle star and how spread out it is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's clinging on. I get a little I closer think in the DSC if you want for a show. I think we're good. We can, okay. yeah, we can zoom out. We can zoom out. Keep moving along. Got some anemones to the side. Another one of those black corals. So again, it's really hard for me to figure out, are we going up or like across or? Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> just, yes. just trying All to. All of the above. Both of us. Like, <laughs> up, across, what's going so, on? Um, yeah. It <laughs> I'm looking uh, kind of, if you look at the navigation screen up in the lower left uh, on, the, on the big screens up here. Okay. So uh, the yellow thing with the little four corns is her. And so I'm looking kind of sideways as we're going along. Up a slope. Yeah, so I'm, I'm lateraling the vehicle left. Vehicle's moving left, but looking um, southwest. So we're moving southeast. And we're kind of coming up as we're doing that. So you can kind of see that in the Argus shot there. So if I turn and, and face the vehicle the way the uh, the Argus is moving it and um, the southeast, you would you wouldn't be able to see the cliff. It would look you'd be able to see how steep it is. Like, so that's the way we're actually the ship is moving. Kind of sort of peering into the abyss. <laughs> That's a great perspective. Yeah. But that was like, whoa, the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> into the deep right there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't turn around. <laughs> A reminder we're on a ridge. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the don't look down moment. <laughs> and if you look at some of the graphonographs, you can see our um, the depth history or altitude history. So we're slowly coming up the cliff as we kind of go along the so I'm assuming we're probably close close to about a thousand meters right now. Yeah. So again, we're making our way up. This is one of our shallower dives. One of the things that I notice, you guys, is that we see more things the shallower we go, which is kind of a cool thing. Definitely. Yeah. This dive has been really great. We've seen a lot of things throughout the dive, but but yeah, I'm really excited to see what's kind of up on this ridge that we're approaching. A lot of diversity and abundance. Oh, our viewers are telling me that I missed a really cool fish. Keep that one six zero heavy. Did. <laughs> or let me know if you change it. It was a no it was a Ooh, another fish. <laughs> it's a type of angler fish. A bat fish. Oh. 
Oh my God, he's smiling. That's not bad fish. Is it man fish? It is cabbage fish. Talking about this one. What's this fish? Bat fish. Bat fish. Not a pancake bat fish, but a bat fish, no less. Is that really a bat fish? This this is not a bat fish. No, this is not a bat fish. No, the one we saw before. But what what is this? That's a great question. This is a fish fish. Fish fish. I've seen these before, okay. but Push in just a little more. how is he moving? Like oh backwards, my gosh, the forward. eyes. <laughs> They're so big. Eyes. Oh, it looks, well, to name? me, it looks like a trigger fish that I would see in an aquarium, just looking at the uh, fins and how the fins are moving. Mm. So a type of trigger fish, but a deep dwelling one with very large eyes. <laughs> okay, here comes him out and can easily move in any direction. It's kind of cool. Got one of the purple ones there we've seen before. Yeah, is that a different. Victor Gorgia? Uh, I think so. Right. I need to uh, scoot here a little. Sounds good. Okay, gonna put in another step if we're good. Yeah. Bridge enough. Five zero meters bearing one six zero, please. So we've been doing this for a while. Have you developed a favorite coral yet? A favorite deep sea coral? They're all my favorite. Aww. <laughs> I Aww. say that about every like every time a cool one comes on, I'm like, oh I love that. And then I was like, that's my favorite. And then another cool one comes, and I'm like, that's my favorite. <laughs> I think I like the Aridogorgia, the big oh, spirals. the spirals. Yeah, I love the Aridogorgia. I was thinking before that question, though, how much I like the Victor Gorgia with that oh, vibrant yeah. purple. Yeah. It seems otherworldly. Um, and then we had a stony coral earlier that yes. was really, really bright a yellow. yellow one, yeah. That one almost looked like a cartoon. It was, oh yeah. So brilliant in color. Yeah. Yes. See, I'm a colorful person, so yeah. those things pop for me. Totally. I love the metallic orgia. When you see them, when we sample them and get them on the ship, they really look metallic. It's so cool. That's so cool. I feel like we need to, you know, make a Crayola crown box <laughs> that's just deep sea coral colors. I love that. <laughs> Coral colors. <laughs> Be a good way to, to remember their names. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I'll agree to that. <laughs> There's another fish up there. Megan, maybe you can help us. They want to know how shallow we're planning to go. Are we going all the way up to like the the, the coral reefs that are we're shallow? Gonna try to, we're going to try to get to around 200 meters and, and then see how much more shallow we can go safely. So we'll see how how that goes. But yeah, 200 meters is, is the plan I think, for right. the moment. So there you have it, 200 meters. The game is how shallow can you go? Yep. We have some optional waypoints in at all the way to 35 meters, I believe. Whoa, okay. But I'm not sure if we're going to do that. Um. Hurt could go a lot shallower than the boat can. Oh, what was that? <laughs> Hurt could go shallower than Nautilus can. We can beach hurt. <laughs> have you done that before, Dan? <laughs> I'm just curious. Like, is that a... Not with this vehicle, but yeah, we have. That sounds like a good blue water story. Was that the, uh, <laughs> the was that the dive obje objective? Uh, <laughs> yeah, when we're doing uh, shore ends with cable or pipeline, we, we 
bring it right up to the shore and then chase it out. That's a very polite way to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> vehicle too there and um, there's that one ONC node that's like it's in this there's two walls and it's up like at low tide it's above the oh right it's exposed and the inlet yeah single digit Two hundred sounds pretty shallow, or not? Like, never swim that deep. I don't comprehend meters versus feet very well. So. Mental math for you. <laughs> if, yeah. we're, if we're saying two hundred meters and there's three point three feet in a meter, how many feet are we talking about, Jordan? Just think yards. I yards like football. Need to go <laughs> ahead and ask Siri. Close enough. <laughs> I had an interaction earlier today with a math class, and so we did a lot of those calculations. Meters to feet. Did you do them too, or just yeah. waited for the results? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried to do them, and my result was different than the math class, but we went with math uh, class because they were actually in math class. Yeah. <laughs> Can zoom in on this one right here, center screen. Yep. Is it strangely lit, or? Have we seen something like this before? I don't think so. Um, so there is a, I mentioned that color is somewhat um, a variable state in the deep sea for a lot of species. So this is a, actually also a plexorid, um, but there's a, there's a very strange purple, yeah. yellow, green color morph. Um, Probably different species than the yellow ones we've been seeing, but it's good to see like this one has its polyps closed here This one has its polyps open I've sampled this on other occasions uh, in Other parts me. of the Pacific here, but um, Still it. still a bit of a mystery coral That thing is cool. I like the purple and yellow for all of my Los Angeles viewers we just <laughs> identified a Lakers coral, deep sea coral, purple and yellow, oh, purple and gold. Here, uh, it, it looks pretty good. Or if you're a Vikings you fan, you're, it's uh, Vikings colors. Got some what in the world? good, good images of Vikings that. Vikings is not basketball. There's another one up into the upper left, okay. <laughs> outside of the frame. Bit. <laughs> Can we come up with a baseball analogy too? Uh, Rockies are purple, but they don't have yellow. Yeah, I don't think they have yellow. And I don't know what the Diamondbacks colors are. It feels like the uniforms are always changing. <laughs> uh, purple one, too. Uh, I was actually thinking about this one here, this white fan. A viewer did the math for you, Jordan. It's approximately 600 feet deep. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear you. Uh, hold position, please. We can just do a quick push in if you have it and then zoom off. We don't have to yeah, right. okay. linger too much. Lights are getting 
getting blocked. All right. Uh, I think that's going to be good enough. What's that? Is that a crab on there? Or I don't know. Oh, yeah, there's a squat lobster up top. Yep. Squat lo Are those the ones that, like, swim? Um, they can, but mostly to escape. Uh, they just kind of perch on these colonies, and usually they'll try and so. eat fish or something that swims by. All right, uh, I think this is, it's a primnoid, but I'm guessing it's probably in the genus Norella, uh, although it could be a couple of other things, but that seems to be the most likely. Okay, thanks, uh, front row, we can move on. Roger. Uh, we'll hold the when you said the, the word squat lobster, 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 I was thinking Roger. about that B-52 song. <laughs> It's rock like lobster? It's like rock lobster, not squat lobster. <laughs> I, like I also thought of that. <laughs> and then the, it played a little bit in my head. <laughs> Get back on you there. Yeah, there's a... That's that's something that's I've heard quite often. <laughs> Everyone seems to jump, go to that song. We're uh, 10 meters into our... Not a lot of popular songs with lobster in the lyrics. Nope, there no, there aren't. <laughs> Do something about it. We stop for. Yeah, I see it. Sounds a lot better than. This comes straight. crab too. <laughs> or chirostylid crab. Well, we're starting to get into a bit of a transition. I would say we're starting to see more species that probably have a bit of a shallower depth distribution, which is. Kind of what I saw over uh, at meal time. Okay, you're good there. We started to see some of the Oreo dories, uh, or okay, Oreo yeah. somatid we'll fishes uh, that typically start appearing around a thousand meters in these parts. Uh, they're pretty shy, but sometimes they get bold. The one we saw uh, while at dinner, big smile. Yeah. <laughs> what was that guy? Oh yeah, the uh, um, Lophodeid. Um, what are they called? Goosefish. That's it. A goosefish? It's called a goosefish, yeah. That uh, angler fish that we saw? Yeah. Yeah, goosefish. Goosefish. Oh. oh, we've got a shout out to the ROV team coming in through the website. Every time they check the video, it looks like you're either fixing the ROV, working in the shop, or flying the ROV. When do you ever sleep, is the question. <laughs> That's the question for the pilots. When do you ever sleep? They're in the middle of a switch over, but think there's a sort of conference going oh on, yeah but the answer on this cruise is pretty Video, rare. You wanna... <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. wow that's a interesting black coral there brambly you want a shot uh yeah can you zoom in just a can. just a quick zoom in yeah go ahead i it. think it might be something like trisopathies but it's just a guess right now. Oh, actually, what is that? That is... It looks a lot fuzzier than other black corals we've seen. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Um, is that fuzz, or is it kind of blurry? It It's it's fuzz. It's marine snow. Uh, I don't know what that is. Can we go for a sample of that, Ooh. please? <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah, uh, video you want to go It's really interesting. It's it's under predation from the backside by a sea star, but it's also got a bunch of these. Uh, oh, I was light years away. Uh, from associate years. crinoids too. Okay, it's starting to get really exciting right now. We just saw something that we're not quite sure. Try what exactly it is. 
And as soon as, they might have already told you, but as soon as you went to eat, we saw a batfish. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good there, I guess. Oh, it wasn't a batfish. It was an anglerfish. Oh, no, they saw a batfish, too. Another one? Yes. Happy to be yeah. Aside from the anglerfish? Sam just, she showed me the picture on her phone. Huh. <laughs> Current's good. The ship's not moving, so. I missed it. Maybe some of you viewers caught that one. Sometimes you can't blink, you'll miss it. Or you can't eat, you'll miss it. Might get a shot on the way down here in the DSC. Mold. Yeah, yeah, on absolutely. For a landing. Yeah, the, the fish I'm most excited about seeing at these depths are usually the Oreos. They, they're, they're pretty charismatic as far as I'm concerned. I just they, really like the name. Oreo Dory? They're not technically true dories, but it just sounds right. It has a nice ring to it. It does. Should we get it there? I wonder if there's any Oreos on the ship. Uh, yeah. Did we get some of the still yes. cam? Yeah. Okay. All set. Roger. Oh, I thought Steve was referring to when he said yes, I thought he meant Oreos. I have not seen any Oreos <laughs> board. Are we going to snip and slurp a piece of this guy? You can do a DVL reset now. Five meters, Sentinel. Yeah, I don't have this one anywhere. A bit there. For, uh, Video. ID. Wasn't collected on any of the past two cruises through here, so this will be a good collection. Zoom right in once. Oh, nice. See all the dust settling. Pilot error. Oh, I dusted it a little. I get too close to the cliff. Are you, are you all right with it? Is that a sea star down there? You can at um, its base? get it out while they're huh. looking at it. So use your port. I think know, Steve said, yeah. Video. Yeah, it, it looks like an instance of predation. Yeah, in the in the back. Yeah. Uh, yeah so where is it? Oh, and we actually might be a little bit below it, but yeah, up up in the colony a bit. There's a some predation. Yeah. You want to uh, tilt up a bit? Look up higher there, Steve. Uh, I, I think we're okay. We can go for a sample in the in the in, in the. Where uh, you can look around because we're getting the manipulator out, so you got time. Yep. So um, we have other cameras. I'm going to circle one. some some areas, and you tell me what's best for you. So we have a branch here, right? Oh, sorry. sorry. That that might be an easy if a cut if you go across okay. there like that. Oh, sorry. Uh, there's also some maybe material up here, or you know this on the far left side. You could make a snip of that too. We're looking for you know 10, 15 centimeters or so of uh, length. I think the uh, the way the ROV is positioned, the uh, low hanging fruit on the right is. Um, yeah. But I'll let Antonella make that call since she's the one driving the thing. Okay. Ready when you are. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> So 
Oh, you want to uh, uh, grip force three. Uh, Data, what was the species? Um, I don't think we have a species identification for this uh, one. No. no, I was just looking that up. Right. Um, yeah, so you'll have to turn your jaws uh, 180 so the cutter bit is... Yeah. There's um, nothing in... You want to zoom in out in the guides moves, that's whatever. anything resembling this immediately. So I'm going to say this is uh, pretty. Hey, this is Megan in the lab. Oh. Or, uh, I just wanted to say I think it's uh, dendropathies. Cool. Thanks, Megan in the lab. So you'll have to dendropathies well, you'll have tentatively. To your jaws halfway close. Steve, do you think that uh, Hippasteria is feeding on this coral? Uh, that's what I was looking at. Uh, I do think it's feeding. Um, and we'll get some observations yeah, of that. There, you had it. Uh, if it is, I'm not aware of very many predation events on black corals. Yeah. Oh, uh, pilots, it's going to be a bit uh, tough to cut because there's a it's a little bit flexible. Yeah. So you might want to get a really good grip in the cutter. Uh, rotate it a little bit more counterclock so we can see what's going on there. Yeah, I've never really seen the black corals be a species that these uh, cookie stars like to eat, but that species is pretty common, so. Yep, yeah. Zoom out just a bit, Tammy. So uh, we have it in the cutter there, Steve. We can keep uh, rotating back and forth and try and break it. Yeah, you can try. Um, these black coral skeletons are really flexible. Uh, there she got it. Oh, perfect. Did you? So rotate now and see if it's in there. So we have samples in slurp containers one and two. So I don't see it. three or whatever else is open. If it's if it's big enough. Yeah, you got some in there. Zoom in, Tammy. Let me turn the other light on. I'm gonna turn the porch light on, Tammy. Rog. I see some in there, but we're going to need more uh, to make this to, a useful uh, collection. Is this a snip and slurp, is it here? Or what are we doing? Uh, are it depends on how, how big of a fragment you get. Um, I could get a bigger piece. Yeah, we're going to need a bigger piece. So I think there's more in there than you think. There's uh, probably five centimeters in there. Uh, we're going to want a little bit more, I think, still. Uh, so we can feed this one to the slurp. Or you want to try and put it in the box? Uh, just go for another uh, cut. OK. Do is you want her to drop it? Is that a Roger, Steve? You That's, yeah, you can drop okay. it. OK. Let's see if you can open this easy, easy. Oh yeah, let me turn off the, uh, yeah, I got it, I got okay. it. I don't, I, the grip is not responding. That's because the, uh, so hold the jaw closed when you touch the left one there. Yeah, I don't have control over it. That's not true. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, a keep what you hold what you got there. Okay. That's, uh, Steve, that's uh, at least 10 centimeters there. All right, let's stow it in uh, suction then. Roger. Suction, okay. Yeah, hard to see. Uh, uh, that'll, that'll do. I think I told you. <laughs> <laughs> They're big, right? The jaws are three inches. Yep. Okay, so hold what you got there, Antonella. Let me rather have something than uh, in a row have any what am I doing? engineering what am I doing? issues. I I do you usually do all this. What am I doing? Camera. <laughs> 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 yeah, so. Bucket. Uh, Roger. Bucket. 
then I need to. And I believe slurp container three is open. I need to go to flush, probably, because so there's probably Herc some hydraulics. stuck in there. Thank you. Herc hydraulics. So I'm flailing here. Sample jar. Yeah, this this is the good kind of collection we like to uh, to make because whenever there's disagreement in our science chat. Uh, and disagreement on the ship, <laughs> getting a piece of it always resolves, or usually resolves those uh, questions. So this is great. So what's the next steps for this sample? What's going to happen when, once we retrieve it and it's on board? How do we get yeah, to a resolution? What are some uh, of the studies that are going to happen? Um, well, we'll uh, first we have to take it on board then we'll do some imaging and uh, preserving of the, the specimen so it can be transported to shore without having any damage or rot. Um, but, you know, we, we, we don't really do anything uh, other than preserving it for scientists ashore on this ship. Yeah. So it'll Sorry, be what jar am I going into here? Um, you can go into jar three. Jar three. Long way, Clyde. One, two, three. So what we'll do is um, preserve it, but uh, you know we're not going to be working on it on the ship. Uh, it'll go straight to the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard, where it'll be housed for scientists to request. Um, and depending on what their requests are, the museum will loan out uh, parts of the specimen uh, so it can be identified and um, perhaps sequenced uh, its DNA for whatever use. I'm sure that's lined up. Um, but one of the things we always want to make sure is that we get enough material. Yep. Um, okay. Either the camera's moved or the jar's not lined yep. up. So look at bubble cam too, because it looks like you're really close in one, but you're... Actually, Even though so you uh, have to look at both. these specimens are you know, really rare and difficult to get at um, from, from a, you know, a log logistical standpoint, so we have to come out here with a ship and an ROV. Um, you know, we don't know when we're going to be out here again, and we want to make sure that whatever material we do get is useful for a very long time. And then you'll want to uh, hold your job. So we want to make sure there's lots of material so that if it needs to be destructively sampled, uh, meaning if tissue needs to be taken off or uh, SEM stubs need to be prepared, that we uh, have enough for yep. scientists' multi purposes. Because, uh, and we also want to make sure that there's enough for uh, for the longevity of the specimen in, co in collection. Uh, yeah. We don't want to make sure that, or we want to make sure that these materials stay around for a long time so that if it is a new species, it can be compared for a really long there time. There it is. I see it. Okay, awesome. Steve, is that enough? Or you want I think that'll be good. Yep. Yep, yeah. I see it now. Okay. That'll be good. Thanks. Great collection. Nicely done, Ed. Were you, were you able to zoom in for evidence of predation by that sea star? Or? Yeah, you can zoom in, Tammy. Sorry, I should have been doing that while oh, oh, she's using the camera. What was the sample number? That was 31. Is it that sea star in the center there on the left laser? Yeah, so we think uh, that's a hypisteria uh, sea star. Oh, up here. There's, but there's a bunch of squat lobsters in there, too. So squat lobster. Oh, sorry, sorry. Someday Antonella's going to program a proportional control. <laughs> okay, they should be able to push right in there. Yep. It's going to be hard to see um, what it's feeding on from this side, but. Uh, yeah, after we get a quick snap here, um, screen grab, we are going to uh, take off. And if we could kind of come around the other side and look at the other side of the stomach side, basically, yeah, mouth absolutely. side. Um, ready to go when you are. Going. Yeah, the, this was interesting. It started some discussion in the chat and on the ship here about uh, whether it was being preyed upon by this uh, sea star. And uh, we do see sea stars, especially hypisterias here, um, on other types of corals. It's pretty voracious. But rarely do we see black corals as the, the prey of some of these. Um, it's not quite clear why black corals might be resilient, um, or if they <laughs> are at all. Leave Argus where it is. It's okay. fine. It's fine. 
The ship's not moving, I'm not going anywhere. So. Okay, hello. hello. I hear the ship's not going anywhere. Ship's not going anywhere. Would we like to continue going? No. Okay, great. There's also um, a pretty cool phenomena or uh, association of, of uh, polychaete worms. Uh, so certain types of worm species live in these tracks or grooves inside the or along the skeleton of the black coral and oftentimes uh, the skeleton will kind of adapt uh, or grow around these tracks where the polychaete is just moving up and down the colony so it, it forms these really neat channels um, and in some cases the the worm species that are associated with these um, coral colonies are uh, diagnostic of certain species. So certain associations are only found with certain corals. Okay, Tammy, try pushing in there a bit. I'm not perched yet, but let's see if we can get a shot there on the fly. You want to try and look under, Steve? Uh, I, I think that's the best we're going to do. I don't see anything obvious that it's being preyed upon, but it doesn't mean it's not. Um, so, yeah, no, no, no stomach averted right now, right here on this zoom. But, uh, yeah, in the essence of time, let's get going. We got some good imagery of it otherwise. Roger. Okay, Sam, you can clutch in. Okay, so Steve, do we want to head over to waypoint three or uh, continue on more of a southeasterly? Yeah, um, can you zoom out a little bit? Sure. Show me waypoint four if you could. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, okay. So this section's going to be pretty steep. Yeah, we can kind of, starting from where we are, head directly to four. Head directly to four. Yeah, so all along that bearing. Okay, so more of a southeast or a kind of a sharp? Uh, the, the previous sharp one you had. east, okay. Yep. <laughs> it's a close-up in 4K, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to get uh, that yeah. close. <laughs> Can do it. So, yep. Are we, are, yep. are, are we still allowed to capture 4K? You have to ask our resident video expert. I have no idea. As far as I know, I know nothing. <laughs> All right. Well, I can do good it enough. And then we can see. I mean, we can have it and then figure out. We're waiting for the ship to move, so it's up to you, Tammy, whether you want to press the button or not. I can stick it back on there. Bridge nap. Steve wants one. We can do it. Now we just uh, figure out. And if we don't, well, it standing. looks pretty good while it's we're waiting. Good, good. I'm going to put it right on there, Steve. <laughs> you want to do a 4K uh, we'll look first? Look at the fish in the back. It's the money shot there. Can we do a 4K burst or no? All right, uh, 4K going. Good. All right, pulling out. No. Full wide. That was a nice shot with the 4K. I think it was the best one yet. I think so. It's only its second time. <laughs> Okay. Okay, ship move in uh, one five zero, please. One five zero, Roger. What does one five zero look like? Looks like a fish. I'm gonna uh, zoom out here. That's the left. You wanna come around? I'll get out in front of you a little on one five zero ish. Question coming in: Will we eventually get shallow enough to uh, see? You can look one five zero. What is okay. this? Sea plants. Plants. Um,
Probably not on this dive. Uh, we will be uh, headed up towards about 200 meters. Uh, I would say it'd be tough to get tough for us to get any shallower. Uh, can we do a quick just snap zoom on this colony as we fly by? Yes, sir. Um, Biggest one yet. <laughs> Push in just a little tiny. Maybe a little more. But uh, in most cases, I think the the area where you start seeing plants and mostly plants in the form of crustos, coral, and algae. I'm dead stick. Uh, focus there, hopefully. This actually looks like something called uh, Candidella, which uh, is pretty infrequently seen around here, but it's not okay. uncommon. Good. Yep, looks good. Thank you. Uh, no, I was talking to Antonella. Sorry. Okay. In general. Try not to move the winch uh, while we're zoomed in. Okay. Because it telegraphs to. We got the boat moving, the winch moving, and trying yep. to fly a zoom. It makes it really hard. Okay. Understood. You can tilt up some. Yeah. There's a lot of tether slack. That's why. What's that? Um, there's a lot of slack on the tether, but. Yeah, but the current's favorable, so it's blowing it all out away okay, from the cliff. Yeah, sure. So uh, I forgot what I was talking oh. about. Uh, I was in the middle of a sentence, and I kind of got lost with that last coral. <laughs> it's been known to happen. It's a problem <laughs> yeah, when you're yeah, in this yeah. field, <laughs> doing something, and you just get distracted by deep sea corals casually. Oh, uh, the light, yeah, crustose coral and algae. Um, so we'll often see those uh, coating the rocky surfaces, somewhere between 150 and 200 meters, typically. Um, Usually 170 meters is where they're most commonly observed. So starting there, you start start seeing like a pinkish tinge to the rock. Yeah, based on the ripples, you mean? Oh, yeah. No, it's all right. I, I thought you said something about the current on the seafloor. There's another one of those fish right to the right of the lasers that we saw earlier. Okay, I'm back the on SBO. Big eye fish? Yeah. Sorry, Steve. The Oreo? Yep. Oreo, a, that's what it is. It's a fish in the family called uh, Oreo somatidae, so we call them Oreos for short. But uh, I think the genus is Neocytus. I was trying to think about it earlier. Like pancake. <laughs> like I was going through all the like desserts. <laughs> Donut. <laughs> Couldn't get to Oreo though. <laughs> Is this a forked whip? Uh, What's that yeah, under that overhang? Underneath the overhang? Yeah. Looks like an eel of some type. Ooh. Can look at the fish under the overhang first. Uh, now you'll have, have to a, up a bit. quick zoom. Steve, yeah, go that, ahead, Tammy. That bamboo coral isn't what Mary's been looking for, is it? It's. Uh, I don't think it's is a bamboo coral. It's a uh, black coral. I think okay. it's one of these uh, parentopathies. We're finding now that they're branching, actually. Interesting. Some yeah, many uh, of them, when they're smaller, I guess, don't branch, but maybe the bigger ones do. 
Yeah. Color is uh, making it tough to see any features on this particular eel. Okay, uh, that's a good hold at least. I think we can. Do you want to see the bamboo? On the pull on out, yeah, and, and as uh, as we zoom out, just kind of walk up. Roger. Uh, Trying to get a DSC of it, aren't you? Yep. This looks like uh, parentopathy still, but uh, <laughs> maybe maybe. Uh, on, on this cruise in particular, we've been having really bad luck with the sparse branching bamboos, but maybe we should see if Mary wants to study sparse branching black corals. Because <laughs> we've seen a couple of those. Yep, we've seen a few of those. What's that, Antonio? Yeah, right there. And All right, we can move on whenever you're ready, front row. We are ready. And if we're happy with this bearing, I'll keep stepping. I'm happy with it. Steve? Yep, same. Everyone's happy. Bridge, Nav. Five zero meters, bearing one five zero, please. Yeah. Uh, let me get back in front of you and we'll have a look at the tether there. As long as we keep it. Nice and loose now, it should be all right. Cam. Sorry. All right, video has to step to the back row for a second. Roger. What am I looking at? Oh, yeah. That's just the way the rope's going around it. <laughs> Can you reach, Can over, reach over and give that iris a little tweak? That's the black knobby on the, either that or punch the auto button. Can you pan over to the right? Can you get a second? Okay. That's good there. Enough pan. Good. Well, what happens when you put that thing in auto, Tammy? Does it go wackroid? something something there Steve oh you mean on that stock yeah yeah it looks like uh, you've got a couple snails on a something or other you want to zoom in on it real quick? if uh, oh, on the stock. and, and, I was and at the little white oh you were looking at these thing. no I was looking at bottom left white thing oh yeah it's a cup Push coral there. yeah I thought this this actually looked more interesting zoom in for us Timmy Uh, 
What do we got there? Got a couple snails feeding on a hydroid colony, it looks like. I'm going to tilt down a little here. Make yep. it dizzy. Might be able to get a tighter zoom on that bottom snail. Yeah, this is, I mean, we, we got it. I think we can move on. Move it on. It's just a curiosity. They're cool looking snails. Okay, well, now I'm on the wrong side again. Yeah, look, they're all over the place. These snails eating these hydrohydes. Yeah, two more over there. Huh. Curious that they're all found in pairs, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Maybe they're out on a dinner date. <laughs> or you. The Hydroid Social Club. Yep. Oh, there's another one. Another set, huh? Interesting. Two, four, six, eight so far. Oh. Oh, Paragorgia with Brisingid, is that? That is. I want to stop her up for a minute. Yeah, so we got... Um, Bridge, no? Actually, that's uh, called a, uh, a precious coral, Coraleid. Um, Hold position. In the genus Hemicorellium. Zoom in there a bit if you want, Timmy. We've seen a couple of these so far, but I expect them to become more common. We're kind of at the depth where they start to come out in abundance. That's good, thanks. Usually between 1,000 and 2,000 meters, they're most common, but there's some precious corals that have very shallow distribution too. Can you describe what we're looking at? I see white, pink, and red. Yep, yep. So and the pink, yellow. <laughs> the pink part and then part of the white part is part of a precious coral called hemicorallium. And uh, the white part looks to be skeleton that is uh, not covered by tissue. Uh, the, these are very, very fragile animals and they will shatter uh, with the, the slightest um, yeah, just touch. Uh, but they've also got a number of other animals living on top, like this large red persingid sea star, uh, kind of feeding up into the flow on top of the taking advantage of the height of the colony, and then some green hydroids uh, on the branch tips. Uh, there's all a number of smaller brittle stars as well. Okay, yeah. I'll sit there. Roger. You'll have to come up. <laughs> I'll have to do something too. So we just crossed about a thousand meters, working our way up. We're a little bit behind schedule, but we'll just keep going, see what we can do tonight. Some of the viewers are noticing um, more fish and more diversity of species as we go shallow, oh, and they're the wondering why. Way out of the box here. Roger. Get our ducks back in a row. It's hard to get your ducks in a row when they keep stopping to look at stuff. I'm going to probably uh, slide under you there. I will say that as much as I love the still camera, it's mildly terrifying when I see the <laughs> How Just close the, it gets. The rock gets so close <laughs> to it, yeah. I know we're in good hands, though. It's Gorilla Glass. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta hit it really hard on the rock. Okay, I can do that. Quick shout out to the different places that are tuning in right now. 
Um, hello, United States, Canada, Australia, Malaysia, New Zealand, Mexico. Hello, Japan, Hong Kong, and the United Kingdom. Shout out to the Megan fans out there. I see you. <laughs> Just gonna uh, drop down here for a quick peek, Steve. See something hanging out down there. Well, we got this question a couple of hours ago. If the coral is broken, can the broken part or the damaged part regrow, or do they die? The answer is yes and no, <laughs> depending on a wide variety of different variables. Um, Shout out to, oh, it's hello, aloha to oh, Team Delta Dan and the arachnophobe band from Kauai. Thanks for that. We see you. <laughs> rock on. Literally, because we're collecting rocks. <laughs> What's that big, uh, big something there on the right in the 4K camera? Ooh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I'm gonna just zoom boom. in from this height, yeah, I'll just, so that? you don't have to move too much. Sure. Oh yeah. So that is Rodan Rodanorigorgia superba. It's it a, is superb. Yeah, ah. it's very superba. <laughs> um, yeah. It's a. So this is a, a relative of the Rodanorigorgia sea fan, but um, this was actually described a, a little while back. <coughs> Uh, so this particular species uh, of Chrysogorgid is notif notable for its wavy axis, so it's, it's more straight, but wavy rather than helical, down, coiled. Down five, please. Um, so it's given the name Rodan Aridogorgia, which means uh, wavy Aridogorgia. But lots of associates in these shrimps and crabs. I'm or noticing more crabs at this depth compared to crab associates below a thousand meters. Yeah, yeah, the, the almost. So this is actually a, a, a project that I'm collaborating on uh, to better understand how these associations work in um, in the, the lower latitude oceans. And it's that uh, typically we find there are greater diversity of associations the shallower we get. So different types of species are found associated with different types of corals more regularly. And the deeper you go, the stronger there is fidelity of one species to uh, uh, perhaps like one species of coral. Um, maybe it's, it's something, something That's an interesting drives, observation. drives their evolution to, yeah, to being That's very fair. faithful to one colony or another, possibly because it's more extreme environment. update on what we're doing. So um, for those of you tuning in and want to know what's going on, we're currently at about the uh, thousand meter depth and we're moving at, up. I want to share with you our current dive plan is to explore shallower depths along the western edge of Kingman Reef, um, starting at approximately 1400 meters and then moving up to about 200 meters. Um, a priority for this dive is to collect samples of iron manganese crust at shallower sites. So we're going to keep our eyes open for that as their chemistry at this depth just hasn't been well studied. We'll also be looking at both geological and biological features and keeping our eyes open for species that we just haven't seen and that aren't quite as common.
Update on depth, 994 meters. Up with a temperature at 4.9 degrees Celsius. That sounds cold to me. Very cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm seeing. I'm noting a lot more instances of predation here. Uh, there's some active sea star uh, movement, predation, and some of these plexorid fans Up another five as minutes. well. Um, those are of interest. Uh, generally, uh, there's, there's another project I'm working on with some colleagues at Boston University and Harvard where we're trying to understand predation dynamics in the deep sea. And, uh, oh, can we uh, zoom on this yeah. fan right here? This is, uh, looks like it could be a Canthagorgia here, and it was the first obvious colony we've seen. You can push in a bit there, Tammy. I'm halfway in. I'll try and come up above it a bit. That's a good DSC level there, I guess. When you zoom in, Steve, are you looking at branching polyps? What helps you um, verify what your hunch is? Um, these days, it's mostly like texture. <laughs> certain colonies have a certain texture based on the density of their polyps and density of their branches. So the texture of this colony suggests to me that it's a, a Canthagorgia from a distance. Now, when I start to look at the colony further up close, I'm looking at individual polyps uh, and how they appear. Okay, push in a bit more. Um, there are certain characteristics, certain features of the main axis of the skeleton that I'm also looking for. So um, in these colonies, I can see that some of these polyps at the base uh, look like they're retracted, but the polyps themselves are standing erect, which means that uh, there's a uh, very high likelihood that this is Acanthagorgia, uh, which is a species that is known to have sclerites arranged in such a manner that the polyp cannot fully retract. So it's kind of stuck in a rigid state. So that's why these ones in the back are standing up. Um, so this is uh, the best evidence we have for this species so far. We thought we saw some earlier, but uh, I think this is uh, likely Acanthagorgia or some Acanthagorgia and then uh, I believe there's some material of this collection, so I don't think we're going to need anything from this particular colony, which is just good to confirm. This has been seen uh, at other sites. I know this, this exact species we saw in Howland and Baker um, last year, and we may have gotten a clip of it, so uh, I don't think it's necessary to disturb this one. There's a really interesting colony over to the, to the right. This actually is arguably more interesting to me. This one right here, since the polyps are all tucked in. Can we focus on that? I don't know how well I'll focus because we're kind of close and I don't all have right. lights. Yeah, let me, uh, let me play around with it here. Can you turn the porch light on, Antonella? I can, uh, what is it? That's what it says. Okay. I'm stable as I get there. So this, this colony here that I'm looking at is not the same as the yellow coral next door. This one, um, you can see the polyps are much more retracted. They're not standing straight up. So they're more squat and uh, against the main axis of the colony, but I'm looking at this one and I'm seeing it's definitely a plexorid, possibly something like uh, Placagorgia or Paramarisa. It's really hard to tell those genera apart within the plexorids from this distance, but um, b based on how the polyps are retracted, it tells us a little bit more about what this particular colony could be. But uh, those are just uh, kind of hypotheses at this point. Uh, we'll have to compare it with some of the other imagery from this area to confirm uh, IDs, particularly those uh, images where we have another collection for. So all set with these, we can move on. Right there, moving on.
in the essence of time, I'm going to keep moving here. Keep moving. Oh, who is on watch right now? Well, um, I'm Dejana Figueroa, and I am the science communication fellow on watch right now. I love all things deep sea and mysterious. <laughs> I'm a teacher, PhDs in deep sea hydrothermal vent animal physiology, but I just, I love exploration. And I am with you on the science party line tonight. And then right next to me, we've got Jordan. Introductions Hi. again. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jordan. <clears throat> I am a uh, public affairs specialist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. We do a lot of management uh, of the Pacific Remote Island Marine National Monument, where we currently are at the moment, uh, to make sure that these waters stay protected and these deep sea environments can uh, be studied for future generations to come. And next to me is uh, our science lead. Yeah, hi everyone. Steve Oskovich, science lead and watch lead for the 4 to 8. Um, so my job here is to make sure the dive's running according to the plan and uh, making sure we collect the things we need to collect. Um, otherwise, uh, my role on the ship more broadly is making sure our science objectives get met for some of our scientists ashore and students who uh, are on the ship as well, uh, making sure our collections um, are of use to scientists, um, both uh, continuing the dialogue with our scientists ashore, give, gathering their input, conveying that to the science party here on the ship. But otherwise, I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Boston University, where I study deep water corals. Cool. Is it tonguefish? Or no, that's another another one of these things. Whatever they're called. Batfish? Is that what we're calling them? Batfish. Na, 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 na. <laughs> yep. Um, I'm to the right of Steve. I'm Rebecca Lippitt, sitting in the data logger position for this watch. I am a second year PhD student at the University of Rhode Island, graduate school of oceanography, and I study submarine volcanoes. Woo! Woohoo. Uh, Samantha Wishnack, navigator in the front row, far right. Um, I am a liaison between the ROV and science teams with the bridge to keep the ship and the vehicles in safe distance between each other as we move through our dive. Um, I'm also the operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust, which is the nonprofit that owns and operates Nautilus. Next to me is Delta Dan. I'm Dan, sitting in the hurt chair at the moment. My job is to not crash the cameras into the cliff. <laughs> but yes, yeah, super close shots. Always on the edge. Antonella, Argus seat. Mostly winch up and down. And not, <laughs> not crash Argus into the cliff. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Is there a little worm there? Moving through on the right? Yep. Oh, there it goes. A little bristle worm, maybe. Oh, yeah. Kind of nice. Right above the Niskin, or uh, right above the push core view. Yeah. I don't Just know if landed. worms are on your. I don't, I don't quite see it. Yeah. It landed. Zoom in there, Tammy. There somewhere. Okay, let's go down the zoom. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? <laughs> no, it wasn't meant to be. There it is. Now I don't see it. There it is. Oh. Come on. One job, Dan, one job. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there's something. What is that? Oh, worm. Squid worm? Not a squid worm. It's a... Bristle? Yeah. I think it's a type of polynoid 
polychaete. So a scale worm. Poly know it. I haven't heard that Oh word. my gosh. I'm very familiar with that group. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's full zoom. From the vent sites. Ah, okay. Polychaete. So tiny. Did we get everybody? Tammy. Oh, Tammy. We're going to learn something new about Tammy. <laughs> We're going to learn something new. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, now I have to think of something. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I'm Tammy Gomez. I'm sitting in the video engineer seat trying to deal with this crazy lighting. <laughs> what do you think about the lighting? I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> We need me to tell you more. Yeah, I'm looking for feedback, so. It sucks for, <laughs> for focusing. <laughs> How's that work? <laughs> it's Driver's too touchy head. on like how far close the ROV is to what we're looking at. I need it to light a little. Trevor's going to rearrange it all when he gets here. So. Yeah, I need it a little further, looking a little further out. Further out, Roger. Hot spots kill the focus. Yeah, I moved to out to reduce, this, so there's not as bad of a hot spot. Yeah, it's definitely a little better than it was before, but... It's only our, really our second good dive. To like, right now the lighting is, to me, I don't know about what it looks like in your monitors, but I have super ridiculous, fancy, really good monitors, and it just, it's killing me that I can't find a good balance. I'll try and spread them out a little more next time on deck. I'm trying to just move one or two at a time. Cause well, you heard it first from our video engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, the lights suck. <laughs> the arrangement of them <laughs> currently. Uh, push in on the purple dude a little there. Another Victor Gorgia colony. Victor Gorgia. You, if you didn't know already, your video engineer is very blunt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can zoom out. I'll try oh, and uh, bring it in a little on the DSC there. It's got nice lighting in the background there. Yep. I can say that because Tammy can't counteract me. She can't see that screen. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Tammy sees everything. <laughs> I know all. I see all. <laughs> video sees everything. Yeah. All right. Let's My keep idea going. of good light is I can see it. So there you have it. That's the team you have on watch right now. <laughs> Delta Dan and the Arachnophobat. Yeah. <laughs> That's the team you got. <laughs> Just like a one big family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, huge shout out to video. We appreciate all you do. Oh, thanks. I hope that's not one of my friends again. <laughs> <laughs> or it's my husband. <laughs> you know people off boat, Tammy? <laughs> Just, just like three? Yeah. Or other. Two more than me. Push it <laughs> just a little bit there, Timmy. <laughs> laser zoom like this we're going. A laser zoom? This to me is a laser zoom. How's that? Yeah. The zooms aren't super nice because I'm Looking at that DSC camera but over there. What if you try porch flash. again for a second? Yeah, Antonella can do porch. Okay. Very nice. Uh, Is your porch light? Yeah. yeah, so I think we got a Chrysogorgia yeah, no, colony here, pro possibly in the genus Chrysogorgia. Yeah, porch light can come off again. Okay, thanks. These also often have a lot of associates with them. I can see at least one shrimp so far. You didn't like that. <laughs> uh. 
But Steve, any reason to stay here longer? Or we nope. can keep moving. No reason. Dan, moving? Uh, yeah, keep moving. You can push right in there once. Yeah. Bridge, yeah, no? Right. Build the screen. That's full. Five zero, zero meters, bearing one five really? zero. Yeah. Okay. So, because the light's not going out far enough, when you're further away, it's a little harder for me to focus. So, you like them closer or further away? With the arrangement of the lights because it's meant for you to be like kind of right over something right for the 4k no, and still I, no i moved them out we actually tilted the 4k up uh about 10 degrees which makes it look out uh the bottom of the 4k screens roughly a meter in front of the vehicle now mm -hmm. when it's on a flat like a hangar deck <laughs> i don't know where it is but this uh, view Aw, shout out. This is actually my favorite team. We've got some fans out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that Tammy's friends so again? <laughs> Tammy's friends giving us love. Oh, wait. Is that Ashley? Wait, did Ashley show? say it? No. Oh, I think oh, okay. she said actually. <laughs> oh, actually. <laughs> I was like, if it's Ashley, yes, then uh, was, that's we know also Ashley, my friend yeah. who's <laughs> messaging me. <laughs> So front row, uh, what's our kind of, uh, are we having any layback here? What's our uh, response from the We're ship? Good. We can yeah. uh, stop any time. Okay. Let Argus run us over. I should be out in front a little more, but we're pretty shallow here, so, and we're moving slow enough. There's okay. Basically well, we may want to do one of these C-Pen uh, collections, which might actually be able to do with this, just the slurp. You might not even need the arm. How do you feel about that? They uh, they're just sucked onto the rock. They're not attached. These guys here? Yeah. Yeah. Usually we would uh, take the slurp and try and scrape them off the rock with it. They they seem to be all over this place. So if you need to run up a bit and get some uh, room, good here. You can stop them up. You want yeah, this one? You can stop the ship Bridge, and nav? do this quickly so that we can get this in the hold position. Okay. Oh. I think they're more up. A Oh, Steve, why are you targeting this one? So th uh, we were just having a discussion in the science chat about, um, so this sea pen is, is very widely represented in this area. We've seen dozens of colonies so far over the past couple yeah, hundred meters. Um, these sea pens are often pretty poorly represented in a lot of our surveys um, because uh, usually sea pens are soft sediment dwellers, so they live in the sediment. But where they are attached to hard bottom, uh, they're of interest, and oh. we call these types of pens Sorry. rock pens, uh, and they're really poorly known. Um, I switched their diversity is really poorly known, so any I samples we usually is. get are typically um, representative of uh, possibly new species, so that's oh. why we're going to target okay. this collection. Got it. So it's sample time. Ready? Almost. Yes. Yeah, ready. Should be hot. This can go into uh, slurp number four. We'll, uh, we'll flush here first. I see these science questions coming in, but I'm going to hold off until after we take this sample and we'll get to them. I'm curious too. So we, um, some of our collaborators and, and we here too um, on the ship have uh, had out CPEN uh, specialist Gary Williams from Cal Academy who uh, is working on this group of animals and he's been uh, requesting a lot of the specimens of CPENs we've had over the, no over the years. You know, he worked with us, uh, I think, during our exploration of the Greater Farallons National Marine Sanctuary a couple of years ago, a few years ago at least. Um, so it's uh, it's good to have Roger. scientists ashore who will look at these specimens with earnest as soon as they get back. But this is also a, a target specimen for some of the eDNA sampling we're doing. Uh, we need some sort of ground truthing to the water sampling we're taking. So any sort of uh, physical specimen we can have in hand gives us Difficult concrete ground. proof that 
you know, one sequence in our eDNA might belong to uh, that particular sequence of uh, coral that we get from its tissue. That's awesome. So it's also helping those the, e the uh, broader eDNA studies of deep sea corals. Right. It's kind of cool thing. Oh, here. look at that. A shout out. Hello, St. Matthew students watching right now. I had a great time interacting with your class earlier today. I'm so glad you're online and hopefully you can check out um, check out what we're doing right now. We're gathering a sample of a sea pen. There's another colony out to the right, Dan. If, uh, unless that's too far. Yeah, this one will work. Okay. Be, uh, once we get onto the right door here. Sea pens kind of give me nightmares a little bit. Wait, what? <laughs> okay. I'll explain myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a... a <laughs> I won't say how many times, but... Several times I've tried to slurp sea pens and they end up just going, getting stuck in the tube so and then lost forever. Oh. Um, because they have a hard time yeah, that's four. moving yeah, around four, some of the bends and the hose. Okay. Uh, Turn it on. Fortunately, this is not one of the ones that I'm most nervous about, which is a genus called Anthoptylum, uh, which kind of has a very stiff okay. curly Q um, uh, skeleton to it. This one should hopefully go in. That's 75. Pretty. Oh, look Whoa. at that. Just like that. Just like that. I mean, how that does that doesn't give me nightmares. That's like perfect. Well, yeah, wait, wait, wait. It's the night the, night <laughs> the <laughs> nightmare <laughs> part. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Woo. Good collection. And Steve, I missed your explanation earlier. This is not a rock pen. So it, it is a rock pen. It is. Yeah. I okay. mean, such as there is a thing called rock pens, sure. but common name. Yeah. Um, so we call them, you know, common name rock pen if they're attached to the rock. But there are also okay. some sea okay. pens which can, can do both. Uh, surprisingly, you know, they can their peduncle can adapt to living in soft or hard sediment. We saw that uh, a okay. few years ago, I believe, where we would see them in crevices that we thought were, you know, sediment dwelling, uh, you know, pretty deep sediment where they could you know extend a peduncle down and anchor but in reality it wasn't much deeper than a centimeter or two and they were just kind of faking it interesting zoom in just a touch Tammy. anything else we want to do here nope yeah, nope carry me, on let me get on the other side again right there. okay we're behind our rebecca now. that was sample 32 yep great Yeah, so the, the nightmare part was really just about losing your sample in the tube and then <laughs> just never being able to find that's it again. that's it. It's yeah. just gone. It's, it's just gone. gone. I yeah. was imagining like a 10 foot tall rock pen like <laughs> running after you <laughs> or <laughs> wobb wobbling after you. <laughs> but good luck with your no, nightmares no. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> My nightmares are Hopefully associated you'll sleep with soundly. losing samples, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I think everything's been going pretty well so far. Steve, <laughs> you can't just say stuff like that. I, <laughs> so Let's far. just pretend that. Um, okay, here's a question coming in here. <laughs> divert, divert. <laughs> Curious about the Argus cam and why, why, what, what is Argus looking at? What's the purpose? Um, so Argus is kind of an eye in the sky looking down on Herc. It has a couple of purposes. Um, one is helping the pilot. So on other systems that are just a single body ROV, you kind of don't, it can be harder to get your situational awareness. So you have stuff like sonars that you're looking at to see what's around you. But the Argus view can be really helpful to see kind of what's, what's coming up. So for example, heading up the slope. So I'll try to keep the camera looking a bit ahead of Herc so that Dan can see kind of what's coming up, if there are any overhangs, if there are any um, cool samples. So that's another benefit is the scientists can kind of see what's around Herc. Sometimes we'll fly right past something that's really cool, but we won't, we wouldn't see it if we were just kind of looking at the fairly zoomed in view that Herc has. Um, also, it, it kind of helps our outreach. It's, I think it's kind of hard a lot of the time for people to visualize exactly what this looks like. It's kind of, you know, 
cool to put an ocean or a vehicle on the ocean floor. And so being able to actually see what that yeah. process looks like kind of helps people get a better feel for what we do. Um, sometimes I know people have just seen the camera feed and they think her, you know, is just a tiny, tiny little thing. And it turns out it's not, it's about the size of a minivan and it's a pretty complicated operation. So, so that's what Argus does. Well, I think that's a beautiful description. It's really cool to have a sub that's like a bird's eye view mm -hmm. of what's going on. It would also help sometimes seeing the size perspective of things. Like when we get to those really, really big sponges and stuff or the cliffs, then you're like, oh, it's way bigger than we thought. Or Yeah, exactly. So it kind of helps with scale. Like, whoa, what's that feature? Yeah, for sure. We're on the move, 150. On the move, 150, Roger. Uh, when you get a chance, you want to turn the bender back on? Yeah. Steve, what's on your list of things that we like definitely want to stop for? Um, Generally speaking. Crusty rocks. Crusty rocks, yeah. okay. Uh, Rebecca's going to help out with uh, IDing some of those. OK, turn um, your bender again. Face melting coral community. What uh, was that? Face, face, melting. face melting. Is that a real thing? I'm gonna look that up. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's so fantastic. Face melting. Yeah, like, like just enormous. your jaw drops okay. and your face just melts. <laughs> face melting. Face that is melting. another title. That was a Nautilus term a number of years ago. You were just glossing over that one. Okay. Face yeah. Melting. So, so if we see like crazy high densities, we're gonna okay. want to attempt our. EDNA, if uh, you know Niskin bottle, but you know, deferring to the pilots on how safe that is. I think uh, we're good. Okay, so if we see Close some high density Close community, we're going to gonna possibly do an <laughs> EDNA there. <laughs> what was that? Close enough to watch change. <laughs> we still have an hour and bold. Fifteen, Dan. <laughs> I wrote that down. <laughs> Face melting coral. That's another title yeah. to a song on our album that oh, we're yes. working on. Crusty yeah. rocks and face melting corals. What else have we got? Crusty rocks. I have the rachnophobes, the blue water blues, <laughs> good rocks, bad rocks. Uh, I see shark. Right list. There's some mm -hmm. interesting uh, ripples. And there. rock pins. Oh, yeah. Are they symmetrical or asymmetrical? And what's the difference? Hmm. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, Emma would say fail. So, uh, what's the difference? Uh, asymmetrical is from, see if I don't mess this up. Asymmetrical is current because uh, they're always, <coughs> the current's always going one way, so, you know, it builds up on one side and falls off on the other. Symmetrical is from wave action because the waves go back and forth, back and forth. Hmm. That's a thing. There's a whole science from it. Okay. And there's uh, wave action that happens down here, which was really surprising to me. Yeah, that's, that's the part that I, my brain is getting stuck on. Huh. Yeah, Emil, Emil can tell you. Those look uh, no sand wave expert by a long shot. They look like the you know, they're higher on one side than the other. Mm -hmm. So the particles keep going up and falling over the, the back side. Ah, uh, okay. So the symmetry is less about the spacing and more about the ridges themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. That's kind of cool. Follow-up question for ROV operators. Is there a delay um, from the controls to the ROV? And do you have to adjust for or compensate for that? There's no delay. It's the speed of light, um, but it is 5,000 pounds for the vehicle being driven around by a 20 horse hydraulic power unit. So uh, there is um, velocities that are happening, and we're basically directing the which way it's drifting as you're going. Just like a boat. Mm. You can't, you know, there's no brakes. 
there's no brakes? No, it's not like a car where you can hit your brakes and, you know, lock the wheels up. It's like with a boat, right? If you're going along at five knots and then you put it in the... You, you stop thrusting forward, the boat keeps going, right? So oh, yeah. Or like an airplane. I think that's what uh, happened to Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens to me when oh you see no. the ROV crash into the cliff. <laughs> Momentum. We can reverse thrust, but uh, it's usually not effective in time, and it results in uh, zero visibility or reduced visibility, uh, especially on a silty bottom. So you kind of got to take it slow and uh, just direct your direct the vehicle kind of the way you want it and then see what happens. These formations definitely changed. It looks like we might be on the ridge edge. What do you think, yeah. Steve, for another move? Uh, yeah, let's do it. You want to keep going along this ridge or drop uh, down? Yeah, can you can you uh, drop down a little bit? Yeah. Um, kind of I don't want to be up on the hard pan stuff. I kind of want to be on the edge. Yeah. So we find that edge and then we'll go along that. What do you think about that? That sounds good. We'll keep doing that until we find it. Okay. Seems like we left it off to the. I'm gonna turn my head here. To What's the, that? Uh, to the east a bit. Purple thing down there. Mm -hmm. Is it a cucumber? I think so. Uh, Dan, we're going to do a one, two, five if that works for you. That works for me. Bridge, no? That's a cucumber. Uh, five zero meters bearing one, two, five. in a bit there, Tammy. I haven't done a cucumber zoom lately. <laughs> that could be a song title. Cucumber, cucumber, cucumber zoom. zoom. <laughs> Gonna write that one down. <laughs> we have a lot of work to come up with lyrics for these songs. Nice. So you can cucumber. do it on the transit back. <laughs> <laughs> Along with our choral charades. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, last spot, one two five. You said. Is that what you said? Uh, one two five. Yep. Very impressed with scientist Steve's typing speeds. His keyboards are very difficult to type with. I don't. I. Everyone has their own opinions, but I really like the tactile response of a mechanical keyboard. Yeah. They're so expensive, though. I'm good. Thanks. Oh. This is um, I don't I don't know a lot a lot a lot about this. A question about a genetic formation. transfer in corals, gene transfer. Mm -hmm. Steve, have yeah, uh, I can try to answer it. What's the what's this? What's it say? Okay, I'm gonna read it one more time. And make sure I get it right. Is horizontal gene transfer more common in organisms like sponges and corals? Horizontal gene transfer, I don't think that's a thing in, okay. in corals and sponges. Yeah, that's a thing in, in microbes, like bacteria. That's what I, yeah. yeah.
a geo question. Um, you were talking about how we map the seafloor to kind of see what's underneath, what the floor looks like. They want to know if we're also scanning for heat to get information about magma flows that might be happening under the surface. Right? I don't, I don't know if we are. I don't, yeah, I don't really know how the the mapping works besides using, you know, the multi-beam sonar, but I don't know if that picks up heat as well. Yeah. That might be a question for... Yeah, uh, I think the multi-beam yeah. is sound. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah there, I, that's not something we do, the best of my knowledge. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have used other sensors to try and understand if there's, um, you know, reduced reduced compounds coming from the seafloor, like, uh, um, you know, things like methane uh, gas um, or sulfide gas. Uh, we have we used to have a sensor uh, that you could drag along the bottom on the vehicles or something and detect those redox compounds. Um, but that's not really related to the question. Yeah. Look at that spider uh -huh. go. Or is it a crab? I think that's, that's a, a crab. question for like a geophysicist. I remember being at Zoom conferences in. with like lots of graphs of heat. Yeah. <laughs> models and whatnot. Maybe a little more. There are heat models and stuff, but then in those cases, geophysicists also tend to look for zones of low velocity in the mantle, um, which could indicate some form of partial melt. Um, yeah. Oh, there it is again. I know, isn't it cute? Uh, I sh I'm, I'm mad because I don't remember the name of this cute little guy. I just remember he was a diva. <laughs> Right. You got to you got to look good and smell good. Yeah. <laughs> Hamalid crab? Hamalid. Yeah. Hamalid. So is that a, something he's stuck on him or he's holding it? Yeah, so the, the these 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 legs here in the back are modified so it's holding that anemone above its head, I guess. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I guess it's like anemone down. uber. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you didn't want it. So the enemy is still left. Move it up. Yeah, yeah. It's not really clear what the anemone gets out of that. I guess a free ride. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the other organisms that you've seen these these crabs uh, provide Uber service for? <laughs> Black corals, uh, octocorals, sponges. Um, some of the things they like to snip off are like br whole branches of a coral. Um, what else? Whole sponges as well, like big, big chunks of sponge. Um, there was a really, really interesting one uh, I saw in the Caribbean that had a whole dome of a sponge held up above it so that you couldn't see it. If you were looking top down, so you couldn't like see it at all. It looked like a moving sponge. It looked like a moving sponge, yeah. Um, but if you looked at it from the side, it kind of, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Comments from the viewers. It looks like a quote-unquote king crab because it has a crown. Uh -huh. <laughs> to the right, enemy. there's a fish. Might find that interesting. Uh -huh. To the right, to the right. Zoom in a bit. We're going to see lots more fish diversity as we move shallower, too. Um, it's unfortunate we couldn't have our fish uh, fish biologists on chat for this watch, but uh, I know that they'll be reviewing this video, so best to get these images if we can. I think this is a type of cusk eel. So Steve, earlier a fish that looked similarly kind of with that eel-like long tail, but it had long and thin pectoral okay. fins coming yeah. out. Yeah. SOB. Do you know what that is? Um, uh, I, I'm not sure. I can go back and look at it, but it could have been a, a type of rat tail. Uh, ah, okay. I, I've never seen it with those kind of fins yeah. before, but rat tails might be more diverse than I'm aware of. The, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to go check. A 
Okay. Everyone happy with this bearing? Uh, yes, it's uh, improving. Yep. Jan, good yep. with uh, yep. Argus? Cool. Bridge now. Five zero meters bearing 125. As we go on shallower, are we going to start to see a change in the morphology of the fish? Um, a bit, yeah. So, uh, you know, down deep we tend to have these kind of very long eel-like body plans for fishes. Um, but they'll definitely start to see the uh, diversity of fish morphologies. You know, things down deep are adapted involved that kind of long, uh, very energy efficient body plan, but you'll start to see things like predators uh, as you get a bit shallower. Um, these predators are probably going to be you know, more built for you know, swimming fast and uh, chasing down prey. <coughs> we also see a number of ambush predators, which I haven't quite seen yet, but I suspect we will. These ambush predators are uh, th um, things like uh, chonicops. Uh, you know, angler fishes will sit there on the bottom and eat things that swim in front of them. Or um, there's a fish called uh, um, the coffin fish, uh, which does a similar thing. We see up at depths a little bit shallower than this too. Turn on the porch light, of course. Uh, Sladenia is the genus name on those. Here you go. Oh, nice. Nice, yeah. That's nice. So far, primnoids, yeah, we, we lost the black corals, it seems. Uh, we lost our bathypathies. As we move shallower, we lost some of those uh, parentopathies species. Uh, we had lost some of the precious corals we haven't seen in a while. But we still have these primnoids and chrysogorges in this habitat, as well as the sea pens. So you'll see that species are starting to turn over pretty mm -hmm. quickly. And, and that's like at almost at the 1,000 meter mark where we see that change yeah. happening. Yeah, there's a, so it, th those changes occur at um, kind of fairly regular intervals. It usually aligns pretty well with the, what are called water masses in the area. Um, maybe, although not always. Maybe a rock from down yeah, there. Yeah, any rocks? Uh, Ooh. Yeah, a few. Rock target? We just kind of went past yeah, one that looked target. a little blacker. But. Uh, any, uh, you see, see, these are, uh, I think they were back in this way. Yeah. Is this potential for collection? Uh, I think mm. we're just looking. Maybe. Right okay. You mean like this, maybe? That looks pretty in there. Yeah. Yeah. I never what know about you. below okay. it? Like. These? Right to the left of that. These? Maybe. It's kind of in there. In a little crevice. Yeah, okay. that one's maybe sitting there. I guess we're going to stop the ship then. We're going to try? Okay. You want to try or no? Uh, what do you think? Mm, I I, I don't not. think it's going to be yeah, successful here. Uh, so yeah. I, I think let's keep going. Roger. Wait for something more obvious. It's okay. it's it's tough with um, a lot of these rocks here because they're partially buried by sediment. So they right. look loose. They look like they're sitting on top here. But you go to pick at them and they're just connected to the entire mountain. We can uh, is put this over in front of you. We can do, Rebecca, uh, is there such thing as an underwater uh, uh, sea saw, okay. like a saw, a rock saw? Sit down and poke. Put, but you can put it on board. The ROV. Yeah. Poke I don't know. I haven't heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, want, I want one. That'd be really useful. Right? In some cases, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know exactly what that would look like, but still. Fish. Yeah. Everywhere. Sorry, I, I, 
across the plot there. I need to They're good. go this way. We're on 125. <laughs> Oh, this is a different oh, got there. shark. Oh, yeah, it's a, is that a shark? I think it's a shark. Yeah, it looks like maybe a cat shark. Zoom in just a bit. Not a dog shark, but a cat shark. Oh, no, come back. Oh, come back. Yeah, it looks like a cat shark. Very cool. I mean, they're a dog fish, right? But not yeah. dog sharks. Is there a dog? There's but no isn't dog the shark. dog fish a cartilaginous fish? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, You're it is. Can we get yeah. the arm out? Uh, no, not yet. Just okay. Be ready. I'll be ready. If they uh, rock of opportunity, then we can be ready to stick it yep. out. Okay. Sounds good. Very nice. Cat shark. Uh, completely turned around now. Um, mm -hmm. There was uh, some work we were doing on the Okeanos Explorer, and, well, uh, I think, who was on that? Crew. So it was. I was co-leading with a colleague, and I think uh, that uh, Nav on the previous watch knew was out there too. We um, saw a cat shark in an egg case attached to a coral. Like it was translucent, so you could actually see the baby shark growing inside the egg case wow. attached to the sweet. coral, and it was amazing. It's rare to see them filled. Usually the egg cases are all bursted open and there's no one, no one home, but it was extremely rare to see that. But that was quite shallow. That was only a few hundred meters, maybe. So does that make them kind of like horn sharks? It's horn sharks do that, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know much about shark diversity and behaviors. Just what we see in the... I guess we're attached to corals. Usually we find these shark eye cases attached to these types of things. Sometimes it skates too. We don't know if it's all, always sharks, but cat sharks seem to be associated with these types of communities. So this is going to drop off anytime soon, or is it just going to get sedimented? Yeah. It's definitely dropping off there. Yeah. Um... Steve, we could drop down a little more. Oh, there it is. Oh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Found it. Okay. Something. Yeah, let's just head up this. Same. That looks like bearing. the drop off. Okay. Bridge now. Five zero meters, bearing one two five. Joyride. <laughs> Plus a shark. <laughs> That's so uh, can we one, two, five there. Yeah. Can we zoom out on high pack to sure. the whole dive track extent, see where we are? No, we've got quite a ways to go yet, but uh, Well we skipped waypoint three, so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. So, so we're, the end. we're trying to get to at least waypoint 12. I was going to say. That's Are a we trying to get to 15? Uh, that's doable. So that might be doable. Ready to go in? One more watch, but we've got to also ascend too. Oh, what do you got there? Not sure. The oh. Halasar. Oh. I think we're, we're on a good pace right now. We should be able to make it to waypoint six by uh, end of the watch, maybe. Cool. Question about the oxygen level: Are we approaching an oxygen minimum zone? Great question, and uh, the answer is yes. Um, so, well, we're approach we're approaching in a zone of low oxygen in the water column. Um, there's, you know, oxygen minimum zones which are you know persistent. Um, and then there's just areas of the water column that are uh, have lower oxygen. Uh, in this case, the area of low oxygen is about five to six hundred meters, somewhere around there, about six hundred meters. And uh, oxygen's still dropping as we're rising. Right now, we're sitting at about forty-three micromolar, um, which is still plenty, uh, but it's technically not considered 
formerly an oxygen minimum zone. Yeah, I think uh, 20 or 25 micromolar is the actual cutoff for true OMZ. Got it. So, but we are seeing a drop. Yep. Yeah, uh, we're coming downhill. That's why. So, and I'm quite a bit ahead of you. So I'll try and wait for you there. Are you uh, holding up to let the ship catch up? Yeah, Dan? I'm letting Argus catch up because Antonella can't come down anymore without stuffing it in the mud here. So. Can we either look at this one or this one, whatever is closer for you? I think we should have time to look at both of them. Too. Sure. Is that the fish you were talking about uh, with the long no. barbels? No. Uh, maybe. Oh, hard to tell. I think that's a that's a, a rat tail. A there, Tammy. No, it had a really long, like needle-like pectoral fins. Huh. Okay. Well, we've got a primnoid here. the bottom there that you're seeing. I'm, uh, we're kind of far away and my, I'm facing the other way, so I'm getting tucked around. It's hard to get a good shot here. Okay. Let's see here. I have to get western with it. Nope. Oh. Go. All right. At about 900 meters. I think that means we're officially entering the twilight zone. <laughs> <laughs> At twilight, too. <laughs> oh, wait, no. At is it dark dusk. outside yet? Is it twilight yeah. right now? Is our twilight and dusk equivalent? I think so. Good shot. Great zoom. Finally. Wow. All right, so this really helps. I wasn't sure until we got this zoom, but it looks like this coral is a primnoid octocoral in the genus Norella based on the arrangement of the sclerites I'm actually looking at the individual sclerites in the body wall the polyp which is kind of neat great shot you can see all this marine snow drifting by is that from thrusters, or is that just natural? Uh, it's hard to say. It's yeah, I don't know. Either way, I mean that's typical for what these animals might feed on, actually. So it's pretty neat. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, move so on. Go right there, and I'll try and get a shot of it. Great animal. shot. We got 20, 15 meters left on this move. Do we want to stop? You you can you don't have to get hit the other one. You can. Skip sure. up. Yep. Uh, it's actually uh, I don't mind because uh, it's not bad to have Argus out in the deeper water here as we're going down. Okay. Or at least over me, so we got time. If I'm too far ahead, she's uh, 
getting nervous over there. Okay, tell me you want to try pushing a little. Oh, you hurt. So we got some shrimp, brittle star associates with this colony. Looks like another metallogorgia. Good to confirm though. Only one shrimp. Sometimes you'll see mating pairs of shrimp in these colonies, but this one seems only they have one. But okay, great. I'm happy with the shot. Thanks. Okay, off we go. All right, I think we can, once we acquire the ridge, start to track up uh, if you're done with the move or whenever you're done with the move. Okay, so track up the ridge here? Yes. Great. Due south, or are you thinking a different angle? Uh, yeah, I like that exactly how you had it before. Yep. Like that? Yeah, right there. Due south. Due Roger. south. I'll give you guys a minute to catch up. And then we'll put in another move. Yeah, I'm under her now, so I'm not sure what we got, where. It's about five meters left. I can let you catch up or put in a move now. Uh, you can change your bearing to south if that's where you want to go. Okay, I'm 180. Happy. I'm happy. Bridge nav. Uh, five zero meters, bearing 180, please. That's south there, so RLV looking south. Great. Maybe. What do you think, Steve? ROV's looking south. Yeah, uh, oh, it looks great look to me. That. Look at that sonar. <laughs> Hit something in front of us. Hmm. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Maybe that was just me turning. Ah. You thought it was a canyon? <laughs> <laughs> that was surrounding us on three sides. <laughs> it uh, was a slow turn. There. Amphitheater. Yeah. Wishful thinking. Yeah. Hey Steve, at what at what depth do you think we'll find the f the face melting coral situation? <laughs> I'm just just curious about that. Uh, I make no promises, but the shallower we get, the better chance we have. Should move underway. Generally. So it could happen. Oh, all of a sudden when Anything when I said happen. the word face melting, I'm yeah. thinking about that ending scene in that Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> The guy's Raiders face of the Lost melted. Ark. Yeah. Yeah. Did his face melt? Yeah. Yeah, all their faces <laughs> melted. Kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a turn. But in this case, we're not talking about a painful face melt. This is like a oh my goodness, this is amazing. My face is melting. <laughs> yeah. I think we really need to make that a thing. <laughs> face melting? Yeah. <laughs> it, it has been a thing. It just. It went away for a while. Well, we'll bring it back. Everything that, else that is was coming a, back. That was a that was like the word of the year 2015 on Nautilus. <laughs> 2015. Maybe 2014 even. Oof. It's like We're going way back. It's a decade. <laughs> wow. so don't remind me. Yeah, I've always heard bass melting associated with like a guitar solo. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, I think that's where it comes from. But we've co opted it here for the marine biology community. <laughs> oh. I'm just going to, uh, while I'm waiting for Argus to come south. Geo question coming in here. Look up. What we're looking at is this caused by a volcano, a mountain range, submerged reef? Can you describe the geological features that we're looking at right now? So we're going up the side or a canyon of Kingman Reef currently. Um, a lot of these down. features are super sedimented over, but as we kind of worked our way up from a deeper depth, I was noticing some more kind of like layered um, geological features. Um, kind of hard to tell with all the sediment on it right now.
tough to say. Um, you know that, or we all know that, a lot of these uh, these reefs and atolls are formed by coral growth over millions and millions and hundreds of thousands of years. Um, so it's tough to tell, you know, what part of the um, the atoll or reef we're on without mm -hmm. ex you know, physically examining the rock uh, underneath. But there are some clues about you know, how the rocks are might be weathered or um, if there's any sort of you know, erosion or effects like that. Uh, that might tell us what kind of rock it is, if it's hard or soft, um, maybe a little bit about its composition, but for the most part we really don't know, uh, which is why these rock collections are all the more important. Can you uh, step her 10 meters to the uh, east? 170. Oh, that's what you're thinking? Uh, no, just go 10 meters Oh, just straight way. east. Yeah, that'll okay. get Argus off the... It's, uh, if we want to go along this ridge here... Bridge, no. That'll put her off in the deep water behind me. We step one zero meters bearing zero nine zero. kind of flat up above and then down yeah. here there's some more more questions more coming vertical. in are we at the right depth that would be uh, just one zero meters bearing zero nine zero good for an octopus nursery um at this depth so we we have seen a couple of octopus uh well yeah, at least one octopus nursery i think what they're talking about is the one at monterey uh uh davidson seamount that we were at uh, a couple of years ago. Um, the octopus garden? Yeah, octopus garden, octopus nursery. Uh, we haven't seen any of those outside of that area, although there have been similar circumstances uh, observed with octopuses uh, off the Costa Rica margin, which is uh, a bit further south. Uh, but as far as I'm con uh, as far as I've seen, I don't think they occur anywhere else. So if we did come across one, it would be a pretty significant find. Face melt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that would be an appropriate term. Yeah. <laughs> Got five meters left on that step. Yeah, and then you could... Keep going south? Yeah. Great. Drop down five meters. I feel like if I sit this way, th then it makes sense. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, yes, that's <laughs> that's <laughs> down. That's. Have you seen Manny when he's doing that? He's yeah. In the I believe it. It, it really works a lot better if I can look at high like pack and. <laughs> Sometimes we're all three doing it up here. Yeah. <laughs> I do that with maps, though, like paper maps. I don't know if oh anyone's yeah. used those in a few years, but still do. I like paper maps. Yeah. Oh. Or I'll do it with my phone, too. But Front row question. What's the current like? Uh, it's not much at the moment. See a little floaty bit there in the water in front of us. The little shrimp is not, they're not moving too fast. Just uh, while we're waiting for the boat to move, I'm playing around with the uh, DSC over here. We get the uh, BB BBC shot, as we've called it on other cruises. <laughs> Dark in the back, light in the front. Okay, we're gonna start heading south. Right. Bridge nav. Five zero meters, ah. bearing one eight zero. Stuffed up the. Uh, Too close to the clip. Are you trying to do 4K? No, I was trying to center up the DSC on that thing, but I dusted it. 
So you can see by all the particulate in the water that there's not much current. <laughs> <laughs> Good demo. Of, you sound like somebody I know. <laughs> a lot of uh, sediment here. And I, as I come away from the cliff like that, it just really blows it out. <coughs> it seems like that always happens on cue when I ask about the current. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like uh, it's it downslope. So when we're up against a cliff like this, if you get the vehicle sideways to it, then the thrust is d directly into the yeah. into the cliff, and uh, it tends to then want to nudge up against the cliff, and you got to thrust away, and then it's game okay. over. Insert coin. Ship move underway, 180. We're uh, trying to get Argus off in the deep water here behind her. There's a urchin right here. Yeah. Do you want to go take a look at that? Sure. Push in a bit there, Tammy. These are pretty voracious predators too. Let's see what it's eating, maybe if it's eating something. Okay. It's gonna be raining sediment from my uh, down below where I pushed off there. You want that porch light? Is that another sea pan above it as well? Yeah, I think it's the same one we sampled. Yeah. Yep. Not sure what this one is eating, but uh, all of these hydroids over to the left-hand side are something called solandaria. Uh, it's a type of structure-forming hydroid, not coral. But I don't know if that's what it's eating or not. Could be. These uh, these urchins are pretty brutal. Um, they will eat anything. Uh, they'll eat other crinoids and things. Um, they're just... They'll eat their own cousins? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was doing some work in the Caribbean a few years ago, and there was a particular knoll where these, uh, these urchins would um, come up and pin down swimming crinoids so they couldn't you know, swim away with their crinoid arms. They would oh. pin them down with their, uh, with their long spines and then start like nibbling their arms. Wow, that's horrifying. It's a circle of life. Got right, it. that's what that song's about, right? Yeah. <laughs> Gotta find a way to eat. Yeah. So but you have nightmares about sea pens, but not yeah. that, no, but, <laughs> but not predatory I think, sea urchins. I think I'm <laughs> continuing to be taken out of context. <laughs> I was talking about <laughs> Losing samples, uh -huh. not the seat pens. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, there's a pretty intense downslope current here. It's pretty good for oh. anything that might be suspension feeding. These are new layers for us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Rebecca, what are we looking at? Well. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> it's super hard to tell, like Steve was saying, at these depths, right? So we're getting closer and closer to the top of the reef and don't know if we're looking at basalts or more sedimentary rocks or carbonates. They're just completely sedimented and crusted over. Um, we've had a couple of surprises like that when processing samples in the lab. There have been a lot of really weathered rocks as well as things that are coming up as sedimentary that we didn't expect to be. Um, yeah, so it's it's kind of tough to say. That's super interesting. I feel like it's always the, you know, it, like corals or sponges that come up and then we're like kind of surprised, like, oh, new species. But it didn't occur to me that rocks could have the same uh, surprise factor. Yeah, no, it's been interesting. 
We, we often, yeah, it's not part of our standard operating procedure really to break open rocks, but we're always happy when we have geologists out to uh, do that for us. So we do it in a controlled manner and not like a, uh, you know, break open rocks just for You know, like fun. go crazy with the sledgehammer. Yeah. 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 Oh, like I do with my kindergarten class with the geodes? Yes. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> it's a very interesting rock texture here, though. Yeah. We've seen in many of these small fish that just went through the lasers. Can we get another uh, step 10 yep. meters east? 10 meters east. How about 20? 20. 20. 20. Bridge nav. 20 meters bearing 090. It's that big dark patch in Argus coming up in the upper right. Does anyone else see that? Yeah, it's a cliff. <laughs> Another <laughs> Not the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> to the far side. Yeah, right there. It's just exposed rock. I want to drop down to the next ledge, but we got to step off first. We're in the 20 meter ring of death. Backing off. You get a little zoom there, Tammy. A little fish. Oh, ooh. Now you know which way the current's going. It's cool how in the 4K camera you get the top-down dorsal view. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty sweet. 360 fish cam. <laughs> nice. Strangely, there's more attached things on the hard pan bottom out here than there's actually on the wall. It's unusual. Hmm. Maybe the currents are better, or it's more stable up on top. All right. Um, so we're pl still planning to head through waypoint five, or uh, we can start heading up slope, kind of through just to the west of waypoint five if it's easier. Got to make it up there eventually. Okay, yeah, we've got 13 meters left on this step east to get Argus away from the wall. And then we can either, like you said, kind of follow contour to five or... Let's go up, yeah. Up, yeah. okay, it's continue. It doesn't seem like there's a lot here. Yeah. Up it is. Is up. up will be still 180, unless you want to do something a little yeah. more gradual. No, that's fine. Okay. I'll let you know when we switch. Point. Up is that way. Roger. <laughs> I wrote into the dive plan waypoint nine, approximate start of steep section. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> I think we already got there. Yeah. I don't know what we're gonna find when we get to waypoint nine, yeah. but I'm pretty Just sure. Wall. <laughs> vertical. Probably more than ninety degree slopes. Okay, Whoa. To start dropping down a little bit. How far is waypoint nine? Gonna get there on this watch? No. No. We'll be we lucky if we get to waypoint five. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping we could get to 13. Bridge now. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, five zero we, meters bearing We tried to zero. maximize the time, but the delay this morning cost us a few hours, so hope, I'm hoping that we can still get as far as we can during the uh, by midnight, but I think that's gonna have to be our 
hard off bottom and recovery time. What was the rationale behind a recovery at midnight? Um, Versus extending into? It, well, originally, uh, if we had just postponed or put the dive uh, to the length that we planned it before, so 16 hours, it would have run us into 2 a.m., which is not a great recovery time. Ah. So we just said 14 hours. Got it. Uh, which would be a recovery at midnight. We'll try to do what we can. Are we pressed for time to go somewhere else? Uh, not particularly, but it's a... Uh, it's a priority to get the arm functioning, so we want to make sure that uh, yeah. that, that doesn't have any problems for the future dives. Can we zoom on that yellow thing? Yeah, you can push in a bit there, Tammy. And our move 180 is underway. Roger, 180 underway. Okay, push in a bit more if you want. This looks like another, possibly another Acanthagorgia. Similar to the ones we saw a bit deeper. Okay, appreciate it. Bridge nav. Uh, one zero meters bearing zero nine zero. I can uh, come up for maybe we'll find another ledge above us. It looks like the cool stuff is below me. It's kind of a bigger feature, I think. Backing off. Got some questions coming in about the fish that we see at this depth. What, are, what type of food can they expect to find this deep? What are they eating? I've never seen them eat anything. <laughs> the, so the, we've, we're seeing a bunch of rat tails now. These are uh, fish in the family Macroeridae. Um, they're typically macroinvertivores, so that's a fancy way of saying they eat things, uh, you know, larger invertebrates. Uh, or things in the sediment, um, like worms, uh, maybe small crustaceans, um, things on rocky surfaces occasionally, but uh, they're, they're not really ambush predating, uh, predating on any uh, larger fishes or things like that. Zoom in there, Tammy. Uh, but there are other fishes. Um, I think I know that the, pretty sure that the Oreos are. Uh, Planktivorous, so they're eating mm -hmm. things in the up off the bottom. So they're eating shrimp and maybe bits of marine snow that might be tasty. Can you, uh, can you rehome the DVL soon? Oh yeah, let's do that. We've got three beams, but I don't know. 
that enough. Uh, let me. There's an unbranched bamboo coral there. How's that? Or put it on USB. I don't know. I'm actually. Sorry. No, it's already there, actually. Oh, wait. Maybe it. Oh. It's not working at the moment. You got no beams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's okay. Okay. I know. I'll just. So don't believe the yellow RV. Yeah. It's the blue. The cluster. The blue smear. More of a t turquoise. Turquoise. Um. Okay. That ship move's done. Do you want another stuff for Argus? Or oh, I think we can go. Heading south. Yeah. Okay. Bridge nav. I believe in my video more than I believe in. Have at the moment. Funky because of the Five zero maybe. meters bearing one eight zero. Yeah. I'm not Let's offended. Wanna get a zoom there, Tammy, while we wait for Argus to get going. Yeah, the DVL is coming in and out with this steep slope. Yeah, I got some cool stuff coming up. Hopefully. Let's um I, I know it's gonna kinda put us off this uh Go ahead, Bridge. Canyon, but um I think we should start to move up. Uh, upslope directly. Yeah. And get uh, on top of this. Standby bridge. Okay, zoom out. Bridge now. Uh, for this dive, the final waypoint uh, was at 211 meters. Yeah, two on one. So what was that, Steve? You wanna? Yeah, move move up. So uh, go up slope directly and just start uh, uphill from here. Is uh, my current heading to pretty much five. south? Yeah. South. We don't have to follow the ledge all the way up uh, this right. way. South will uh, do. That's you want to go south? Yep. Yeah, whichever way will get us up the fastest. Uh, up the fastest will be. Uh, I mean, at the moment. You want to start coming up? Yeah, just. So. Gain some. Some altitude here. Roger. Still one eight zero, right? So uh, are you thinking? If he wants to go directly uphill right now, it's two two five. Oh, Steve, do you want to go directly up the slope or continue towards, like, directly? Not here? not so severe west. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Maybe southwest. Yeah. Like. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Up the contours. Okay. Perpendicular. So Come up. Let's say two zero zero then. Okay. 225 will do right up. 225 is too severe. Is it? Okay. Steve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay. what we had before. 220. 220. Yep. Roger. Bridge nav. Uh, let's do five zero meters at 200. Zero zero. I'm starting to see more of this now. I think we lost it on, on the, some of that uh, steeper face, but there's still some stuff here. Is, uh, well, no, that's not a coral. Keeping my eyes out for those Dumbo octopus. I think you could see some here. Bridge, Nav. Were you asking for remaining distance along track or final depth of dive? What are all those spots? Are these things? Yeah. Good on the up. These are Metallogorgia colonies. Oh, during this dive? Oh, they're, they're coral colonies. Total during the dive, um, 1,000 meters remaining. Oh. As we get closer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're sticking up maybe so half to three quarters of a meter off the bottom.
So th th this is something that I conf has confused me. I've been working. Uh, you know, I, I think we have a pretty good understanding of you know, what metallogorgia is in deeper water. There's one species, but then there's this other species. Um, we've collected this this particular animal from uh, the Phoenix Islands. And uh, it definitely belongs in the genus Metallogorgia, but actually maybe a different species from that, which is observed deeper than about a thousand meters. So for a number of years, I ended up calling this thing uh, Metallogorgia species two, but I'm pretty convinced now that it's probably a, potentially a new species uh, that is just segregated by depth. Um, but we have some material that we've sequenced uh, from this coral that shows that this species and the one that occurs primarily below a thousand meters are only separated by, you know, one and a half percent. Oh, wow. Uh, in their genetic code, it's it's incredible. But they display very different morphologies. Like this one is more just like a ball of polyps. Mm -hmm. um, very three dimensional, whereas the Metallogorgia melanotrichos, much deeper, is kind of just like a, an umbrella of polyps. This one's more like a bramble. But also the associates are very different in some cases too. Hey. Question coming in. Does the ocean have tumbleweeds? Some of these things look like tumbleweeds. If they were to come off their stalks, they they look like ocean tumbleweeds, and could they survive? Hmm. Shine a bit more if you want to. We finally found the perch. Yeah, that looks great. Thanks for that imagery. Okay, off we go. surprised there's so much sediment up here when it was actually pretty well current swept down below but much much heavier sediment drape Kind of surprised we haven't seen any uh, any of the other angler fishes. Yeah, it's been pretty sparse. Are the brittle stars on the corals symbiotic or parasitic? Um, in most cases, it's what's called commensal. Uh, so it's a type of symbiosis where neither party really receives any benefit. What's what going on there? Dragons. Some prey? Whoa. <laughs> Balloon. <laughs> Looks like that. Oh. Oh. I thought that was 
That looks like a solitary hydroid. Uh, just the crab might have pulled it off the rock. Snapped it. Ah. Uh, yeah. Wasn't its disguise. It it could have been. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, they're definitely not known to swim like that. So it must have been with the crab in some way. Yeah, that's a so that's a solitary hydroid. We see those from time to time. Uh, it it could be that the crab was uh, trying to acquire that move in. Uh, RV and science bridge is requesting to turn on the echo sounder. Ship's echo sender, is that okay? Yeah, fine with me. Steve, any reason? Uh, nope, no reason. Thank you. Hello. Oh. Got a question coming in about um, if we have a bucket list on things to find when we're exploring down here. What are the top things that you want to see? Um, and actually, before you answer that question, Steve, do we want to continue on this? Yeah, I like, I like, I prefer, yeah, this, this is much better now. Great. Yeah. RV? Yep, yeah, I'll be happy. And then when we, when we do reach the top of the ridge, we'll just go right up it towards in the direction of six. Roger. Uh, five zero meters bearing. I think two some zero. of these rocks could be loose over here. Oh yeah. Like to the uh, left. Pilot, do you want to check if you have any loose rocks yeah. down there? Sure. That's one thing on the list. Loose yep. rocks. That's one thing on the list. <laughs> on my list was sharks, and we saw those the other day when we were pulling up, which <laughs> was pretty sweet. Anything, anything down in front? Oh, I saw one move. That's a little loose. Bonk around. Bonk, bonk, bonk. There's a little one in there. There's one. Uh, it's pretty right loose stuff, huh? Yeah. Enough to be loose. Yeah, maybe you can break some something off. Maybe the one right in front of us. The one right below the jaws is loose, but I'm gonna try stop and use the. Ship. the uh, Roger. Bridge nav. Can we use the end of the jaws to poke? Hold position. Yeah, how about, uh, how about, any, can you break something off of that? That looks pretty crusty. Oops. There oh, you go, yeah. Perfect. Can you get one of those chunks? Sure. That was beautiful. That was like you might want to go to Grip Force Three or so. It was effortless. Okay. You get that one. Your jaw's touching right now. Love when they break easily. Okay. Force Three. Oh. Just fell down. Oh no! Where'd it go? I can't see. I'm gonna do a. Uh, oh, you got the sample in situ. Perfect. Give it a minute. Okay. Right at the bottom of the HD camera there. See it? Yeah. You can see the fresh area that you broke. This one? Yep. Oops. Turn your jaws a little. They'll fit in between the two rocks there. Other way. Oops. 90 from that. Like that? Am I going for the smaller one or the one that my jaws are hitting? The one that your jaws are hitting, okay. I think. Oops. Oh, no. Well, now it's on the ground. Now you got it Perfect. where you want it. <laughs> it's pretty soft stuff. You have to go in with your jaws uh, not 
quite so far. Those grabby claw games. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna read. That's a grab there. Beauty. Perfect. And everything's open except for starboard box A. Yeah, I think we'll go for B. Okay. Do you want to take a picture of it? Or? Yeah, if you can get yeah. in the porch light. Yeah. Is, porch that, is that okay, Steve? Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Zoom, please. Ready for sample sample? Um, I think he wants to zoom, but I'm just, just a quick, quick you guys quick, give yeah. me the Just okay. a quick zoom in. Can you, yeah, Tammy, can you zoom in on that and I'll give it a spin? Don't let the next watch take the glory. <laughs> <laughs> Look good. All right, well, that looks good. All right, we can stow it. Okay. Ready for sample salvo? Roger. Oops, wrong button. <sighs> Put your um, nice. bubble cam in here a little bit. Yeah, here. Can there you hit. go. Oh, wrong way. Yeah. It's preset five on the. Oh, sorry. Are you fine? All right. A sample tray. That's the one I want. Sample tray is coming out, and there we our go. rock's gonna be secured shortly. We're coming Maybe up to the end of our watch yeah, here. Sorry. We're saying goodbye, Delta Dan and the Arachnophobe Band. Until the next time. Thanks for tuning in. There we go. I think B. Did we go A last time? Uh, yes. Everything's open except for A, so wherever. Oh. Come on. What have I done? Where did I get that so messed up? Might be on the side of the vehicle a little. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Come on. Perfect. Okay. Hang on, I think I'm hung up on my shoulder. There we go. Okay. Halted. Okay. We're out. Hey, Steve.
All right, so we just had a watch change and people are settling in, but we'll get to your questions and comments soon. Nope, 100% gain, no Z bias, crazy Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. You left my velocities alone, though. <laughs> it's like somebody moving the, the seats in your car. <laughs> that would be Tammy over here. She makes every adjustment to this chair possible, <laughs> opposite from mine. So, Nav, are we holding position right now? Yes, we're holding position right now, uh, but we'll get moving when you're ready. Yeah. How you doing, uh, Herc and Argus? Uh, we're ready, here. Ready to roll? <laughs> ready to rock. Okay, let's uh, start stepping up to waypoint six. All right, so we'd like to probably follow this ridge line that we're on, maybe one six zero. One what? One six zero. One six zero. Uh, yeah, that looks good. good. Yep. Okay. One six zero. All right. Roger. Bridge nav. Can we have a twenty meter move? One six zero. Well, I guess they picked up some rocks. Right. They're not as light as they thought. We've got uh, two rocks so far, I think. They Is that right, Data? Did they pitch any plates? Yes, two rocks so far. Uh, and no, no four biological pitch, samples. Plates pitched. It's pretty good. Yeah, that last rock was pretty late. So. Okay. Yeah, no plates. No plates pitched yet. That's cute little fish down there. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Yellow. Oh, yes. Yeah. Have we seen any of these today? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Steve was like saying how they're, it's baffling to try to ident clearly identify these, because there's several that look quite similar. So to me, this one looks like it might be a sclerotinian coral. You want to zoom in, Dave? Oh, a stony. A stony coral, yeah. yeah. So it looks like Enolopsomia. As we zoom in, we'll be able to see the polyps better. Yeah, yeah. So this is a sclerotinian coral, Enolopsomia rostrata. And we call this yellow one Amphiloides. Do you want porch lights on? Okay, yeah. I think what he was yeah, referring yeah, to yeah. were the plexarids. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of yellow corals at this depth. So a lot of the plexorids and the Acanthogorgia, but. This is a, uh, a stony coral. And so Enolopsomia rostrata can come in two colors. You have more of like a peachy whitish color and then this bright lemon yellow color. It's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're good? Yeah, it looks great. Thanks. What do we know about the carbonate chemistry at this depth here in this area of Palmyra and Kimon? Do we know, like, if we're below the uh, carbonate compensation depth? I have no idea. Oh, I think, I would think we're above, well above it. 
Okay. Yeah, we're above it. Well, that makes sense because yeah, as we're looking up, at this up. Um, substrate, it doesn't look as pitted as some of the other uh, carbonate caps. The average depth of the CCD in the Pacific Ocean is <laughs> 4,500 meters. <laughs> So we've actually technically been above it this entire time. Oh, wow. But that's just the average. Yeah, I, I know it shoals in, like, as you go further north. OK. It's 500 and it's 5,500 meters in the Atlantic. That's the average. So it's deeper in the Atlantic. Ooh, a star. And there looks like there's a polychaete on that star. Can zoom in, Dave? Are there two polychaetes, the yellow things? Yeah, those yellow things. I think they're um, scale worms. Emil, can I see the document next to you? It kind of looks like the star's wearing a bikini top. <laughs> <laughs> and what's just left of the top of the star? It's, uh, or bending over it, it's... Uh, this? Yeah. No, this guy. Oh. Sure. Uh, this is that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's some sort of polypy thing. Probably an anemone or maybe a zoanthid. There's several of them around. Nice shot. That's kind of There's worms really kind symmetrical of placing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like in the grooves of the star. OK, we good? Looks like there's a third one on the far yeah. side. Yeah. Just good zoom. Through. Thank you. What are we looking at? Oh, and uh, a shrimp. You want to look at that? Sure, yeah. Let's take a look. All right, zoom in again, Dave. See what we got, what associate we got there. Well, that's uh, Paragorgia. Okay, good. No. Yep, good. Moving on. Moving on. Do you want to secure craft power or should we just leave it? What are we securing? Craft power. No, or they've been leaving it up. Oh, really? Yeah, there's concern about it not coming back coming to the back. party if uh, uh, we turn it off. Well, I huh. don't know if that's valid or not, but I don't want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's get trust a, it. Get a zoom on that, Coral. Yep. You want to zoom in, Dave? Okay, yeah, this is the... Uh, <laughs> That's a Chrysogorgia that Steve saw earlier, I believe. Kind of bushy. Wow, very bushy. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's pretty. Wow. That'd be a really pretty screensaver. Yeah. It kind of looks like cherry blossoms. <laughs> like spring is here. All right, thanks. Good? Yep. Oh, there's two of them. Yeah. Someone's wondering what's next after this expedition. Uh, we will have just two days in port in about a week and a half. We're almost at the three week mark for this expedition. Uh, we'll head back into port next Monday, not this Monday, but next Monday, um, April 5th. And um, then the ship heads up to uh, Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument um, to go look at the Liliokalani uh, ridge. So lots more diving to come in the next few weeks. That'll be a three ex three week expedition as well. Yeah, let's get a zoom on this fish. Yeah, zoom in, Dave. Yeah, you'll be going uh, like a thousand miles south of Honolulu <laughs> to a thousand miles northwest of Honolulu. Yep. <laughs> lots of miles added to Nautilus this year. It's a good zoom. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, move it on. That was a cute little cuscue. Sorry, I couldn't weigh in. I was having a navigation discussion. What is, what is this? Bridge now. You want to zoom in again? Yeah, Dave? let's take a look at that. It looks like a crab. Yeah, a little crab. Maybe. What the? Oh, is it uh, one of these hermit crabs? I don't know. No, it's, oh. not, a, it's not a hermit crab, Maybe actually. Not. It's a homolid crab or a carrier crab. So you see the, the last pair of legs are a lot smaller and are positioned over the back of the crab. Normally they carry something, but this one must have dropped whatever it was carrying. What does it usually <laughs> carry? Oh, whatever makes it happy, like a <laughs> cute little sponge or a piece of coral. <laughs> Great. Hey, Lonnie, I take a lot of pictures. This shell. one's cute. Oh, yeah. I, li <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and then there's a sea pen next to it. Maybe that's what it was carrying and we startled it. Oh, it no, dropped it. Oh. <laughs> so it that probably wasn't carrying that. That sea pen's pretty <laughs> stuck big? to the rock. He's eyeing it pretty good, though. Is that a rock yeah, pen? Or a yeah, so yeah. that's a rock pen because it has this little suction cup bottom that sticks itself to the rock. That one is Copapalemnon. Yeah. Sorry. That full zoom, Dave? Yes, sir. All I got. All right. All right. Seen enough of this? Yep. Seen enough That's of good. that. good. 
Emil, someone's wondering how many more dives are left on this cruise. Well, we'll see. Respectively. Uh, yeah, I mean, it looks like we're going to get a good window. Um, oh, what's this dude coming up here? So, uh, I'm zoom in again. I'd hope five or six. Oh, a new fish. Weather looks good this week. Oh, it's a shark. Oh, it's a shark. Oh, oh. so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shark. Look at those fins. Yeah, so there's <laughs> a little one. Yeah, I think this is a prosterus, if that's how you pronounce it. Oh! I can, ah. I can oh. see the spelling, I just can't see the pronunciation. <laughs> he didn't want to hang around. Oh, well, he's up there, he's still oh, next to... The guy just came into the view there. Oh. Or is it, maybe it's the same one. Came around the other side. Yeah, they're pretty quick. Being ambushed. <laughs> oh, there it is. Ah. Ah. He's still there. <laughs> he's still there. He's What's like, it doing? Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that an anemone? Coral? This one? Mm -hmm. Oh, crinoid. Stop. Crinoid. Really crinoid oh, yeah. that's an anemone. Who is it? An anemone. So is that carrier crab usually the one you see deeper with anemones on their backs, or, or is that a different um, type yeah, of we, crab? We see uh, homoly crabs at a lot of different depths. Yeah, so I've seen a few of different kinds. But it's different from the crab that uses different things uh, for its shell? It yes, it's, yeah. it's not a hermit crab. Okay. It's a true crab. A true crab? Yeah, instead of a hermit crab. So oh, they have tripod. the full set of 10 legs. Oh, this wow. is a godomus. It's a type of uh, rat tail fish. Oh, not a oh. tripod. Oh. Oops, it is. <laughs> Boink. <laughs> it has the fins really I did look like it, Emma. Fins. Yeah. That's how you know it's a godomus. Oh, hurry along here. Lots of fish, like mm -hmm. four in the frame right now. We're, we're yeah. in a very fishy depth. Quick zoom, Dave. The fish really like these areas where they can hide under ledges. So we're gonna see more fishes as we go. Ooh, pretty. Yeah. This is a metallogorgia. I love the pink color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spring has sprung. <laughs> and then its little friend is called Opiacreus oedipus. They're always found on these metallogorgia. Every single one we've observed has had this little snake star in its branches. What's the difference between a snake star and a brittle star? So the snake stars um, have smoother arms that are very uh, articulate, so they can curl and twist around the branches. And brittle stars are a little more brittle and spiky looking. Mm. Look at all these little rat tails swimming around. Yeah. That's pretty. Data lab. There you go. Zoom out. Carrying on. Up 
bit there, Jake. Coming up. Zoom on this guy, Dave. Oh, Ooh. that's another Oreo fish. Oreo. Oh, yeah. Every time you say it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need some cookies. What God. I want for an <laughs> Oreo right now. Seriously. Oh, so the cute. The other common name, I believe, is boarfish. Boarfish. They're pretty common at these depths. I love their giant eyes. Yeah. Wow. So the genus name for this fish is Neocytus. And this one looks very much like Acantharhinus. Um, but we're not exactly sure if it is the Acantharhinus species. So generally, I would call this Neocytus CF Acantharhinus. The CF meaning it looks like, but we're not entirely sure it is that species. Mm. Oh, whoosh. <laughs> Sorry. What do you think of that, fish? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that fish has ever seen anything quite like it. <laughs> Megan, we have a few questions coming in about those um, sea stars that were attached to that coral. Um, one question is, are sea stars that are attaching to corals, are they symbiotic or parasitic relationships? And the next question um, is, are the snake stars eating the coral? So the snake stars are not eating the coral. They're symbiotic with the coral. So the, uh, the coral provides the snake star a home up off the seafloor and a bit of protection with its branches. And in return, the snake star helps clean off any uh, gunk that might have gotten cut, caught in the coral. So it's a pretty advantageous advantageous relationship for both. But some of the cookie stars, on the other hand, that we've seen on corals are actually predatory on those corals. They particularly like those bamboo corals that we've been seeing. So we'll often see cookie stars climbing up the branches of bamboo stars, and they'll have their stomachs extended around the branches, devouring the polyps of that bamboo. So that's something to watch out for as we travel along our transects today. Let's get a zoom on that one on the left. Yeah, so all of these are also Metallogorgia, and as you see, it, they all have their snake star, Ophiocreus oedipus. So you say they're both? They're both the same. Yeah, okay. It's kind of like a, an umbrella. Mm. Right. Yeah, they it do look like, like umbrellas balls. or yeah. parasols. And if I heard Steve correctly earlier today, he was talking comparing, the, you know, uh, this, <coughs> the uh, two very closely related species, one that looks that has this umbrella shape and one that's more 3D ball shaped. Oh yeah, there's that poofy Chrysogorgia. Um, I believe there is a photo of it in the animal guide. But I don't think it's been sampled, the poofy one. There you go. Come out. Well, Steve mentioned uh, th th they must have been sampled at some time in the past, and they were their DNA was like one and a half percent off, <laughs> but very different structures. Yeah. But the parasols were found deep, so we're seeing a lot of them up here shallow. So Metallogorgia is found in all oceans at a variety of depths, and they're all the same species. Huh. And the juvenile metallogorgias actually have branches along its main axis, and they lose those branches as they mature. So you'll see the Ophiocrea snake star lower down when the metallogorgia is a juvenile, and then they migrate up to the top parasol part as the coral matures.
Dave, uh, or ROV, um, someone's wondering if we use any light filters or camera filters because our camera feed is super clear. Um, no, not really. Uh, we uh, have a really good camera with a decent lens on the front of it and uh, optical correction for water uh, because the lenses are... Uh, and a bunch of light. And a bunch of light. <laughs> a whole <laughs> bunch of light. Uh, and then we white balance the camera for that light, but no filters. And we clean the cameras before every dive. Mm. It's getting a lot sedimentier than earlier. Mm -hmm. That's not a word, I just made it up. <laughs> Smith, sediment yours sounds like a fun word, though. <laughs> I don't know what else to say in that situation. More sed sedimented? <laughs> that didn't even come to my brain. I just thought of sediment here. <laughs> <laughs> we have a good question of, do we prefer shallower dives or deeper dives? Well, I mean, that I just know. depends on what you're looking for. Same. Yeah. I agree. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. The deep dives, especially the very, very deep, deep stuff, um, very little has been explored, so that makes it really interesting, and we're always finding new stuff. The shallower you go, um, a lot more, more of the stuff, stuff it has been seen, but you see more stuff, so it gets yeah. a little more exciting. So you're finding really neat communities. Uh, but there's always that chance we'll find something new at a shallower depth, as always, like, especially this depth between um, 800 and 900 meters uh, is still relatively unknown. Ooh, look at Cori Marfa. See that stick hydra's right there? No, over to the right. <laughs> <laughs> that stick? <laughs> the pink, the pink uh, flower thing. <laughs> Ooh, cute. Ooh, nice. Good eye. Yeah, so this is a solitary polyp hydrozoan in the family Corymorphidae. And I think we saw one of these, uh, in the last watch saw one that was perhaps dislodged by a crab. Hmm. It was free floating. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Is that bad for it? Um, I don't know. Maybe it could settle back down and be okay. It does look like a flower. It does. You want to kill the lasers? So this one's a yeah. Corymorpha because the um, internal structure, where it's like nice and poofy and fuzzy looking, isn't a is a full ring around it. So if it's broken, it's a, a different it's a different genus. So does that have something inside it, or is that just its structure? That's just its structure. It just has like this sort of fuzzy. Um, I don't know, mouth structure. Kind of looks like an anemone inside. Yeah, like, or looks yeah. like a shrimp or a something. A shrimp or yeah. something. Yeah. No, if that's part of its its mouth. What? It's part yeah, of its mouth parts. It's part of it. Oh my gosh. That's that looks cool. like something else. Yeah, if you want to see a picture from the inside, there's a couple in the guide. Uh, they're under Hydrozoans other. Okay. So shrimp down in the rocks. I don't even know where to find. She's pulling under oh. Nidaria. Okay. There. She's pulling it up right next to you too. Yeah. Oh, it's right there here. we go. <laughs> yeah. There's a Brachiocerianthus. That's the one that has the brakes in oh, this fuzzy that's bit. Cool. And the ones that don't have the brakes is the Corymorpha. Can we get the uh, laser on there? Yep. Yeah. Some of these get really large. Yeah. I think we're zoomed in past the lasers. Yeah, it's not it's not that big. Oh, I see them above. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's what maybe six inches. We good? Pretty. Yeah. Nice look. Moving on. And well, someone's wondering um, about the 
almost ripple-like sand formations that look like waves. Uh, is there a name for that? Sand ripples. <laughs> or, or sediment Great. ripples, yeah. Um, and they can uh, indicate either a steady current or, if they're symmetrical, a wave-produced uh, ripple. You mean there's no Latin name for it? <laughs> <laughs> zoom in again. <coughs> But it's an indicator of uh, current strong mm -hmm. enough to move sediment, and that's one of the reasons why we have so much life down here. There's good currents. The two worm off to the right, too. In addition to the hard, hard substrate. That's a pretty color. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really nice looking anemone. An and then that's probably a polychaete that lives in that tube. Yeah. Yeah. All right, zoom out. Part of the Sabellida. That's all I got. <laughs> Great. So the only wave-like motion you'd have this deep would be internal waves. And those could be generated on the slopes of this reef by the tides. Hmm. It was cool earlier when I went up on the monkey deck. You could see the reef in the distance. Oh, you could? Yeah, all Steve right. pointed it out. Oh, it only looked like little white like Just land formations. Yeah. but. Um, it was still pretty cool. I'm a tube worm fan. <laughs> like the Pompeii worms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tube worms are so wild. They look like they're talking to each other. You're like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that small dot that's moving real fast? What, what is that? Amen, Dave. <laughs> Get oh it. What's going on? Uh, what is that? Oh, look at it. It's got a little. It's like it's bigger. A than little it orb is. around oh. it. Yeah. That's kind of weird. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Could that be a, like a model? It's of like, like a wizard or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's like a living thing. I think it's alive. I think it's just schmutz. Oh, really? <laughs> that was oh, weird. It looked weird. It was moving weird. I was going to tag it as an animal, but now I'm not going to. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not convinced Cancel it was that. Alive. Cancel that. I was all ready to be like, really weird thing. <laughs> it didn't, like, keep its integrity as it went by, so. <laughs> it sure looks carbonate-y to me. Yeah, very. Ancient coral. For our viewer wondering if we're doing a next on Nautilus, which is what we did um, the past two years. Uh, we don't have those planned for this year since we um, are almost back to our pre-COVID uh, streaming capabilities with live interactions and um, social media and having almost everyone back on the ship. Um, they were a great addition when we had less people on board and when um, we weren't doing as many uh, SPL moments like we're doing here or dives or um, live interactions with classrooms and schools. Uh, but since we are almost back to what we were doing before, um, we are not doing them for this year, but we might still be doing some pre-planned YouTube videos where we talk to some of our colleagues and scientists um, throughout the season. So Nav, as we go over to Waypoint 6, let's, uh, let's see if we can explore like the edge of the ridge, like the uh, in between the ridges. Just a little bit. Okay. Come, just come off the the peak, the, you know, the uh, little bit into the valley. Uh, do you want to go to the west side or the east side? Oh, towards uh, waypoint six. Yeah. Okay, so just more on to that the side. East. Yeah, but we could right. just the ROVs can just kind of. Oh, there's another <laughs> yellow sclecterian. Zoom in. There. Yep, you're right. That's the Enolopsamia rostrata amphiloides. And it looks like there's a squat lobster on the other side. That's such a pretty color. Yeah. It's a really good color. Like it's so bright. It's so, like, yellow. <laughs> but how it's does like it know sunshine. to be yellow? Yeah. Um, so it probably that. It has um, some sort of chemical compound in its uh, tissue that makes it that color. And that likely serves as a deterrent 
for any predation. Because of its yellowness? Yeah, it's just not because of its yellowness, but like it just happens to be a yellow compound. What's this white stuff here? Uh, the white stuff, that's the dead part. Oh. So when the tissue recedes, it shows off the skeleton, and the skeleton being aragonite is white. Okay. Right way out in front. Is that what's going on there? Uh, you're kind of off to, like we're moving. We're going south, east. We're parallel. Sorry. We're all yeah. moving parallel with the ship. So. Yeah, so Bob, what I was talking about earlier is just coming a little bit to your left, uh, or to a little bit more to the south, east, southeast, so okay. that we're just a little bit off the ridge right. as we come up. Okay, coming up. It gets, gets pretty steep around waypoint six. How many waypoints do we have? Oh. A lot. <laughs> but we're not going to make it to all of them. Our no. final waypoint, it's at like, what, 35 meters? Oh. <laughs> Five meters. <laughs> Fifteen <laughs> waypoints. If, if we were to go to 34, yeah, 34 meters. We have to and recover half. Argus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It'll be a challenge to make it to uh, 12. That's where 200 meters is. <coughs> is this the ridge? Uh, we are on, you're on the ridge, yeah. And, right. uh, so we'll just be kind of sliding a little bit to the left, uh, just off the ridge. We have a viewer from India. I'm um, wondering if channel one and channel two, or uh, stream one and two, are of the same place. And yes, they are, um, just from two different ROVs. So uh, channel one you're seeing is uh, the feed from ROV Hercules. And then when you go to channel two, uh, that's the feed from ROV Argus, uh, which is watching over Hercules. So it's kind of cool to get both perspectives little squishy thing right in the middle. A little squishy yeah, thing. Yeah, the little elongate shape. Oh, oh Dave. cucumber. Ooh. Oh, it's like What's that swimming? Oh, shrimp. <laughs> 